Hello everybody, welcome in. Hope everybody's having a fantastic Easter weekend. Happy Easter to all the families out there. And a little bit of pre-dinner or post-dinner entertainment for everybody. So it's Easter weekend, so that means a lot of the sporting events in real life are not running this weekend due to Easter weekend. A lot of these guys and gals are at home with their families, much of the same thing in the motorsports world. But we do have a fairly large group of drivers here for our fifth round of racing here from Pure Racing League. So this is our GT3 series. This is the premiere series, season two here from Pure Racing League. I'm your host for the evening, GT45 Gaming, and I hope that everybody is doing really well today. So uh we are a little under the weather here right now so bear with us we're gonna have some moments on the stream where you just might not hear me for a few minutes but uh other than that we'll be moving and grooving here for about four hours today so we are going to be starting with our division three group we'll move into our division two group and then our division one will finish off our racing evening here so settle in everybody because we're in for a doozy here it's daytona road course here today again it's a 25 lap race here in the gt3 series all three tire compounds are required the hards the mediums and the soft racing tires that is and it is going to be a little bit of a tire saver and probably a little bit of a fuel saver race here most likely you spend a lot of time at high speeds here around daytona with the exception of the infield course and you don't spend a whole lot of time in that infield section so uh, great job there by uh, our track maps designers here, Special Operations Administrator Mysterious as well here. Appreciate all that great love she puts into those maps. And uh, Pickens has joined the party. No, <laughs> a Daytona track loop here. Uh, I forgot that that was in there. I suppose we could probably fix that. Sounding better today. Uh, I don't have the pain today. The whole left side of my face is completely swollen up, actually, ATB. So I'm not actually better today. I'm actually worse. Um, clearly, there's an issue going on there. But the swelling has taken away the pain. So <laughs> we'll take the good with the bad on that today. Alright, so we are just awaiting word from race control when qualifying will get underway here. It's going to be led in with a 10 minute qualifying run here for Division 3. Uh, Division 2 gets much of the same thing. They'll get a 10 minute run and then Division 1 gets a 5 minute run. So we'll have a 10 minute qualifying run here which should result in about 6 hot laps, maybe 7 uh with the outlap if the drivers keep it mean and clean and we'll we'll be lining up the grid of course fastest first and we got the wrong car so let's go change up to our lexus here and let's talk about uh the car here for a minute actually let's let's do that shall we we are driving the 2017 lexus rcf gt3 race car uh, it is a front engine rear wheel drive. It has a max power of 535 horsepower at 7,000 RPM. It has a max torque of 542 foot pounds at 4,500 RPM. It has a curb weight of 2,866 pounds or 1,303 kilograms. It's a naturally aspirated engine, meaning it has no supercharger or no turbo assist. It is all motor. And with the BOP applied, the curb weight does not change. And I'm not 100% sure on the horsepower here, actually. Let's, let's check. It takes it down to 502 horsepower. And it actually adds 11 pounds curb weight here with the BOP setting today. So the car is going to be a little bit heavier. And they're going to be lacking a little bit of horsepower uh compared to what the top end of these cars are and that is with the balance of performance settings on and that is to keep all the cars equal so the difference in the machinery is the man or woman behind the wheel hello hello let's go says kilty i'm just going to do a quick check on the stream here make sure everything is running properly we are live on facebook and youtube today And this is a family-friendly broadcast, so especially all the families that are celebrating Easter together to have the big households going on right now. The kids can definitely sit down and come in and hang out with us here today. 100% kid-friendly here today for everybody. Four minutes for qualifying here is the word from race control. So uh, just give me a moment here. I'm going to bring up my cheat sheet a little bit here, and then we'll talk about the racetrack a little bit more. 
while we prepare for qualifying here. So basically what has happened at this point now, uh, you guys can hear the car sounds in the background. Um, they're going to send out the, the track crews. They're going to do a safety inspection on the racetrack at this point. And they're just checking for debris or anything like that before they send the drivers out for qualifying. Once track officials deem that the track is ready for qualifying, we'll get these guys out and we'll get them qualified. And it'll be lined up fastest first, the slowest in the back of the grid. So just bear with me here. I'm just bringing up my, my cheat sheet. Uno momento. Good luck all, says Josh. You too, my man. All right, so should be on the screen in front of you is a track map. I'm not in my OBS right now, so I don't know if the short key actually worked or not. All right, so a little bit of fun facts about Daytona. It's a 3.56 mile, 5.73 kilometer racetrack. has 14 left and right hand turns. It's a tarmac surface, obviously a real world circuit. Uh, we just see the great 24 hour racer just a couple months ago there at the end of january and has an elevation change of 20 feet not a whole lot of elevation change and that elevation change is really in the banking in nascar one and two and three and four essentially so the track was built in 1959 by nascar founder william burr france senior to host racing that held at the former daytona beach road course his bank design permitted higher speeds and gave fans a better view of the cars lights were installed around the track in 1998 and today it's the third largest single lit outdoor sports facility the speedway has been renovated four times with the infield renovated in 2004 and the track repaved in 1978 and 2010 the track is 50 miles north of Orlando and 60 miles north of Cape Canaveral. There we go. A little bit of fun facts about Daytona here before we get into our qualifying session. And we've got nine. Nine of our Div 3 drivers on the grid here on this Easter Sunday. Pretty good turnout on a Easter holiday here for these drivers. So... The championship is tight in this division as well, uh, especially in the top three or four drivers. So it is going to be interesting. I didn't realize there was an intro song going off in the background as well. Uh, it'd be interesting to see um, that battle between those those top drivers uh, shake down. We've got Lone Wolf Racing, we've got Raya's, we've got Toombox. Um, and I believe that drummer driver is up in that conversation as well. Petrol heads in that conversation. I'm pretty sure it's a good battle here between um, four or five different drivers currently. I could be wrong with that. F1 Dennis will join after qualifying 10-4. Good luck to all the drivers. Happy Easter to all who celebrate. Appreciate you, Kilty. All right, so what we're going to try and do here is try and get our Discord server up without lagging out the stream now because we need that up as well. And what the Discord server allows me to do is A, stay in touch with race control in case something's happening. Like um, two weekends ago, we had to red flag our Division One race. Uh, Discord is what allows me to stay in touch with race control for those important details. So uh, we'll try to get that up here while the stream's running so we can stay in touch with what's going on here with race control and you couldn't see the track map i apologize because i hit the wrong hotkey but that is what we're tackling here and i mean daytona it's a it's it's, it's a pretty cut and dry racetrack uh the banking it's all about full speed using the slipstream bump drafting uh the le mans chicane it's all about the exit of the le mans chicane uh or the bus stop it is now formally known as the le mans chicane All right, qualifying is underway, so let's take you to the big screen here, folks. Let's grow. Happy Easter. All have a blessed day. A good luck driver, says Joe. Appreciate you, Nolander. Good luck to you, too, as well, my dude. All right, so we are in qualifying conditions here now, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Race one of three this Easter Sunday, presented by Pure Racing League, and this is our Division Three Series, I believe. That is Egon, I see, up there up front. So it is going to be 10 tenths Sim Racing's Egon to lead the pack out here for qualifying in Division 3. This is round number 5 of Season 2. 
And right now, it's Lone Wolf Racing, our defending Division Three champion from last season. And that championship crown is definitely being disputed here by a couple of these drivers this season. So let's get busy. All right, International Horseshoe, the big, hard right-hander. It is a very patient corner. you got to go for a really late apex out there. You can see Toombox in behind. You can see Egon warming up some tires here. we got Petrol Head in behind him. SoCal fourth out on track. Rias Jr. fifth in track. Jay is sixth. we got Lone Wolf in seventh. Nolander eighth on track. And who's our drummer driver is our final driver here in qualifying today. So nine drivers, and we got one joining after qualifying here. So that'll make for a 10-car field today. Formerly the bus stop. Thanks. Appreciate you, ATV. <laughs> All right, so we're going to stick on board with Egon here uh, for this first flying lap, and then we'll go through our field kind of as they all cross the line. So it's going to be a little bit interesting to see how this all shakes out for these guys because I think Slipstream is going to be a factor here in qualifying. You can see Toombox has opted to go ahead of Egon here, so we're actually going to jump on board with our current championship point standing leader, if I'm not mistaken. Again, I don't. my Discord is not working here at the moment, so... Let's get you guys some game audio. There we go. It's a beautiful thing. Let's turn that down a little bit. All right, we're rocking, we're rolling. So it is Tomb Box here now. Like I said, if I'm not mistaken, I believe this is our championship point. So this verify that, but it's not being very cooperative right now. <laughs> Alright, so here we go. Official qualifying now underway as Toombox crosses the line. The outlap is officially in the books here, and these drivers are now qualifying. heading out into NASCAR 1 and 2 here, coming out of the infield sector right now with Toombox. And he is now in the banking, so leading into the Le Mans chicane here now, or formerly known as the bus stop. <laughs> Appreciate you. Uh, and it's really important here because it, it, the entry is important so you can get the exit, but the exit is definitely the most important part of the Le Mans chicane here, so you get a good run into NASCAR 3 and 4, leading into the tri-oval where the start-finish line is here, and you can see you really want to just keep a nice, tight, flowing exit there, and that was a really tight exit there. He actually could have used a little more of that Le Mans chicane on the exit there, but he gets a good run out of there. And let's see what the first times are going to be here from our drivers as they come around here, so there we go. Everything is actually working today, that is a nice sign. Alright, so it is Toombox, let's see what he's got here. We got side-by-side -side dri uh, driving here in Egon and Petrol Head there right now. That's not necessarily ideal in qualifying, but as long as they're not affecting each other. So it's a 45 flat is our poll time here. Egon and Petrol Head swap positions. Petrol sits in second, Egon in third. SoCal takes third place away. We got Ryas coming through next. And he's going to stay in fifth place. Jay moves up into third place. We got Drummer Driver coming through next here. Let's see where he ends up. He's going to stay in seventh place for the first time around here, but these guys have lots of time left on the clock. They still have a little under six minutes remaining, so it's going to be good enough for at least three or four more laps. Lone Wolf Racing stays in eighth place. Let's see what Nolander's got as he comes around here. And when F1 Dennis joins after qualifying, he'll be placed the back of the pack due to no qualifying time. And Nolander's going to stay currently in ninth place here. So it is Toombox right now leading the charge here in qualifying, sitting in pole position, 45 flat right now on track. Petrol Head is uh, almost four tenths of a second behind, and our third place driver Jay is uh, almost a full second currently. So, Toombox is showing that pace. Alright, 
right, so it is Toombox in the championship points lead with 81 points. TT's Rise Jr. is currently sitting in second with 72 points, so nine points separating the two drivers. Reds, Petrol Head, Team Reds, Petrol Head, that is, in third place with 55 points. And then it's Lone Wolf Racing, our current defending champion, with 54 points, and TT's J set with 46 points. So this is a really important race here for those top five drivers, especially to try and close in on the remaining drivers that they're chasing in the field. So nine points is separating first from second place, and then we got a little bit of a bigger gap there. It's about 14 points from second to third. So it's gonna be very interesting to see how all this breaks down here as this race goes on today, because you know that the drivers are thinking about those standings right now. You know that they've calculated these points out. And you know that it's definitely on the back of their mind with only one round of racing remaining after this weekend. So Petro is still sitting in second place. SoCal has jumped up into third place over j -Set there. j -Set's currently sitting in fourth with Raya's in fifth. We got Drummer Driver who's moved up into sixth place. Uh, just dropped down to seventh place as Nolander improves this time to move up into fifth place. Lone Wolf Racing still sitting in eighth position there and has uh, gone into pit lane. Made a mistake maybe i'm not sure what uh, what happened there we got egon currently sitting in ninth place here as well so qualifying is one thing and then we get the race grid again all three tire compounds need to be used here in the series so the racing hards the racing mediums and the racing soft tires need to be used today now the mandate on that is they just need to touch the track surface so you can literally pit take on a tire and come right back in the next time around to get off that tire and that is going to be a-ok -okay in the official's eyes for using that tire how these drivers choose basically to use those three tires is up to them that was a great exit right there by toolbox really utilizing all of that exit curbing right there you can see he's only a hair off his current fastest lap right now so we're going to stick with tomb box here as he comes around nascar three and four heading into the trioval here and he may have an improvement on this time here we'll have to wait and see as he comes across the start finish line here but this is a good ripping lap right here from tomb box and he's showing some great consistency here uh 145.044 so it is a small improvement there uh about four one hundredths of a second but uh every little improvement is just that much more time that the driver's chasing and behind got to make up so now we got petrol head coming through here we also have raya's improving with a 45.4 that's going to put him now up into second place two one thousandths of a second ahead of petrol head petrol head comes through no response socal and jay is in midfield here let's stick with these two here and see if they can find uh, some improvement we got egon in that too as well we got lone wolf racing improving his time he's now up into fifth place there and we are starting to see qualifying tighten up here now boy that game audio is loud isn't it chad knock it down a little bit more Let me know if it's better now. It, to me, it's just it's it's in a yellow on my audio mixer, so that tells me that it's a little too loud. But I could be wrong. You guys just let me know if it's too much too much of an adjustment. All right, so we're gonna stick with SoCal here. SoCal is just leaving the infield here, so that means we're on NASCAR one and two, leading in towards the Le Mans chicane here on the fifth lap. And these guys will get one more crack here yet as well. So, uh, will we say five or six hot laps? We should see in a ten-minute qualifier around Daytona, and that is exactly what we're gonna see here from some of the drivers. We get six, some will only get five, but. That's how it works out. So we're going to stick with SoCal here. He's been uh, battling up for those podiums, uh, top three positions here, all qualifying long. He's a great pacey driver. He just has had the, uh, hasn't had the best season, I think, that he would probably like to see this season. That doesn't take away from his driving ability. It just goes to show the, the, the competition in the field, really, because he's a good driver. Um, his whole Division Three is, is essentially borderline pro drivers. These are all guys that are always sitting right on the bubble of pro pro-am divisions when they enter these leagues. I mean, they're right there. So uh, that just goes to show the competition in the series. And there's no improvement there for uh, for SoCal that time around. We got Petrol coming through here. Jay jumps up into second place there with that last lap. And what do we got from Petrol Head here? No improvement from Petrol Head. So it is Toombox still sitting in pole. Uh, Jay with a 45.4 there closes in a little bit. Raya's in third place there with a 45.4. They're all still on a lap. We got Petrol Head here in fourth. We got SoCal in fifth. We got Lone Wolf going around one more time. We got Nolander coming through. And he might just squeeze one more in as he comes across here. There is no improvement there. We got Drummer Driver coming around. He's in the infield here, and all the TT drivers are nose to tail here. Uh, Egon, Rias, and Jayset, and whether or not that's going to help this final qualifying time, I guess we're about to find out. It's very tough 
when you're in a line like that one little bobble from a driver could cost everybody a little tenth or, or uh, something here so uh, you can see there the driver's trying not to put any immediate pressure on each other obviously nobody wants to affect anybody's time here but this is going to mean that uh, Rias is just going to slot in front of Egon. Egon can slip right in behind there. Jay's just sitting tucked right into the slipstream of both those drivers, I think. Jay sets probably in the best position here to, to improve on time. But uh, Egon is down half a second right now. So I don't think that this uh, three-way train is working out for the boys here this particular time around. But let's stick with it. Let's see what happens here. As we're coming through to Lamont chicane there, Jay takes a wide exit there. And again, just to make the dirty air, the dirty air factor. I mean, down 1.2 seconds here. We're not going to see an improvement from these guys this time around. Petrolhead has called it a qualifying session. He's satisfied enough. And we're going to see SoCal coming through. Let's see if SoCal finds that improvement. Checkered flag is waving in the flag stand there. And it is not an improvement there. He's going to sit in fifth place here. So right now it's tomb box. Got Jay Rias and the TT gang coming through. There's not going to be any improvements there. As we've seen, they were down quite a bit at the live timing sector. We've got our defending champion from Season 1 coming through. Let's see if he finds an improvement here as well as he comes through. Two, three, four, five, and it's a 45-9. So it's not an improvement there from him. we got Nolander coming through. Let's see if he can find that improvement. He does find an improvement. There we go. A sixth place here for Nolander. It's a small improvement and uh, an interesting number there. <laughs> All right, so there we have it. That is the end of qualifying. Now we will have one driver joining us after the qualifying session has finished up here which will just be in a few moments time so uh, we'll let race control set all that up and then we'll get to doing some racing so that was a pretty good qualifying run right there from the guys and uh they were definitely tossing around the, the second third and fourth positions their tomb box took pole position on the first flying lap and and nobody came nobody even came close to it so uh well in control and clearly showing he's got pace here today so that is definitely got to be a concern to rise and petrol head who are chasing him in second and third place here um but racing is racing and qualifying is qualifying everything changes when we put all the cars on the grid so All right, we'll move it back over here and get into our intermission screen for the time being. We'll hang out here. We will let this all get sorted out. All right, so let's take a look. Toombox with a 45.044, we had JSET with a 45.405, then Rise with a 45.458, we had a 45.460 from Petrohead, two one thousandths of a second in behind Rise there, uh, SoCal with a 45.6, Nolander with a 45.666, we got uh, Lone Wolf Racing there with a 45.688, we got 146.217 from Drummer Driver, and then we've got a 46.6 from Egon, so a second and a half separating the field from fastest qualifier down to our slowest qualifier here all right so we do have our other driver getting out of the paddock here had to do some uh repair work there uh during qualifying car was not quite ready to get out for qualifying there so it looks like they've got that car in order and they're going to have f1 dennis starting at the back of the grid obviously due to the fact that they did not put a qualifying time in and we got a five minutes to race start here so uh there we go good time to go refresh our snacks and our beverages maybe go have a stretch uh go take a quick little step outside if we need to whatever it is but we are starting here in five minutes for division three <laughs> hating on that qualifying time qualifying and racing are two different things no matter you and i both know that though we both know that
Sorry, very busy. I'm kind of keeping an eye on PRL's Discord and the GT45 Gaming Discord. We are nine days away from the Prototype Championship, GT45 Prototype Challenge from dropping here as well. Season starts on April 8th, so it is uh, it is it is busy in the GT45 uh, camp right now. Let's put it that way. <laughs> It is very busy in the GT45 camp right now, that is for sure. Alright, so F1 Dennis is, is the dark horse in this race here today. Uh, this guy's quick. This guy's a very quick driver. I've, I've, I've seen him around other very reputable competitive organizations racing at a very top level. So uh, th this guy can move. Uh, he could very well come in and put a big wrench into the championship point standings here today, uh, being on track. Now, granted, he is going to be starting at the back of the pack, which is going to be a small disadvantage for him to start the race here, but do not count out our 10th place driver, F1 Dennis. He didn't get that qualifying run in. The car didn't get out in time for qualifying, but uh, I assure you that's not going to deter this driver. So what are we thinking? What are we thinking, ladies and gentlemen? What are we thinking about the Pure Racing League GT3 season? You know, this is season number two now. Uh, again, with three very competitive divisions. Um, this has been a great series so far here. So uh, we are nearing a very short seasons. And, of course, obviously, uh, Pure Racing League is designed to develop by uh, our GTWS World Tour drivers. Um, so, obviously, the seasons are always scheduled around what's happening within their esports world as well. So, uh, short season this season to prepare for, obviously, the official set of online qualifiers coming up here in the near future. So, stay tuned for that, ladies and gentlemen. The next major update in Gran Turismo will be those official Manufacturing Nations Cup qualifying sessions. Get your racing suits ready because it is on. Kick them tires, light them fires. Ooh, you thought I was going to forget. Let's go race and chat. We are not forgetting. Come on now. All right, our drivers are off. Ten drivers start out our race here today into Daytona. And turn one is always a little bit risky at race start on these cold racing tires. we got drivers on different sets of compounds of tires. Toombox in the race lead here. He's going to get the whole shot coming around turn one, defend that corner, and re and continue to remain in the lead of this race. We got, uh, I think that was drummer driver F1 Dennis in the background. There's a little bit of a struggle there. Uh, it's Raya's up a couple spots there into second place. We got Jay in third. We got Petrolhead in fourth. SoCal in fifth. Egon up into sixth. We got Nolander in seventh. We got Lone Wolf Racing and drummer driver battling for position here uh, in ninth and eighth place right now. And it looks like it's going to be drummer driver just edging Lone Wolf out around the kink there. Great job. And here we go into the West Horseshoe for the first time here in this race. We got 25 times around this absolutely historic and amazing racetrack. And you can see F1 Dennis right here just getting that car underneath of him here. Like I said, he has not had a single lap around the track here today because the car was in the paddock literally right up until race time. So he is adapting to how that car feels on the fly. So Toombox with a quick 6 tenths of a second lead over Raya's. Raya's is broken free from the rest of the pack here by almost a second. We got Petrolhead there in third and SoCal in fourth. Jay sets dropped down a couple of positions here up into down, sorry, into fifth place. He's got Nolander in sixth place right in behind him. So Nolander's grabbed a spot here. Egon down a couple of spots. We got Drummer Driver tucked in here in eighth place. And as we're coming through the bus stop there, Drummer Driver and Lone Wolf Racing both get great exits there. And Egon not quite as good an exit as the two drivers in behind. Bottles up the pack there a little bit of pushing going on there just to help each other through no harm no foul doesn't look like any damage on anybody's cars there and these guys will continue on f1 dennis he's right there now 2.4 seconds in behind and, and don't count this guy out i tell you what so, like I said, slipstreaming is going to be a big factor here in this race today, and trying to break that toe is really going to be crucial here for these drivers today. Uh, Toombox going defensive into turn one. Raya's looking for a cutback there, but Toombox with a great exit, easily managing his position here in first place over Raya's. But now Petrolhead is tucked into this battle here as well. So third place driver now caught back up to the front two. And we've got ourselves a nice spicy three-way battle here very early on in this race at Daytona. 
between our championship points leaders. And exactly in the order that they're sitting currently in the championship, our championship points leader in first place, chasing is second place, Rise Jr. currently in second place, third place, Petrolhead in the standings is currently sitting third place on the racetrack. So there we have it. We got TT's J set there. He's got Nolander and SoCal right there. Big, big wiggle coming from J set there. SoCal is going to settle in behind J, but he's going to try and stay in that inside line to grab the position there. But J gets a good entry into the corner there, and he's not able to get around. SoCal is just going to have to settle in behind here. Or is he going to take a look down the inside? Nope, he's going to settle in behind J set here. And that's, again, slipstream is a big thing around Daytona. If these drivers want to continue to push upwards and forwards to the next group in front, they are at some point going to have to start playing nice and fit and work together even though they're, they're not necessarily teammates it's just yeah sometimes that teamwork is going to help catch that pack you can see right now third place to fourth place is separated by three seconds and that's because currently first second and third aren't really battling they're just sitting in that slipstream train trying to continue to drive further and further away from the second pack here and that is currently being led by tt's j set he's got socal in this draft there as well so he does have somebody there to work together with him but it's two versus three there right now we got Nolander. He's a second off of those two um, here, but he does have Lone Wolf Racing closing in here in seventh place. So does Lone Wolf try to make the move here? Or is he going to work together with Nolander? And we got Drummer Driver doing much of the same with Egon here. So we got battles happening here. It's not easy to make a pass on the outside when you have uh, one make series on balance performance. You can see that there. Ooh, a little bit of contact there between Nolander and Lone Wolf Racing as Lone Wolf squeezed him a little bit tight on the entry there. And they're still side by side as we come around turns two and three here. Lone Wolf Racing with the inside position there but uh, Nolander has it a little bit of a deeper entry there and he's going to hold off the position from Lone Wolf Racing here for the time being so some tense moments here on the racetrack very early on and uh, we're in for a fight here it looks like <laughs> so it's going to be interesting to see how this kind of develops here uh, there is a lot on the line here right now for Petrolhead and Rias Jr. chasing Toombox in the standings now. Rias, for example, is nine points behind Toombox currently in the championship point standings. You're only going to gain a couple of points finishing in first place today if Toombox were to finish in second. And if you could squeeze that fastest lap point, that'll get you a bonus point. That's not a very big gain going into finale. So uh, this is going to be interesting to see how this develops because with only this round and one more round to go, uh, Rias is really up against here against Toombox and he's going to make the move here. Uh, he's going to lead into the inside into the bus stop there, or the Le Mans chicane now as it's called and Toombox is just going to settle in and behind and he's like okay you know what that's fine didn't really fight there. Petrol head just stays tucked in and behind so a little position swap there and that little position swap though however even though it seemed harmless it's still going to allow this backpack to gain a little bit here but this backpack is not uh, playing fully nice here either as we now see SoCal up in front here with J-Set in behind we got Lone Wolf Racing now looking up on the outside of J-Set here as well and Nolander there in 7th and Egon there in 8th so as we head into the tri-oval there it is again so hard to pass on the outside of the banking here with the balance of performance and these cars unless you just get a much better run than the guy out in front of you very very hard to make an outside pass without that slingshot style move and even then you need somebody on the outside pushing you to get around that car on the inside it's just the op way around the banking here at daytona is just to keep it tight down to the inside and, and that driver on the outside typically is not going to be able to get the job done on the outside of the banking unless they just get a sheer better run than you do out of the corner setting up the banking so right now these guys really need to start working together here they really got to start playing nice if they want to catch that front group of drivers up ahead there's no tire advantage here right now they're on the same tires as that front group so uh, and it seems to me like we have almost all the drivers here starting on a similar thing so dennis has made a pit stop here i believe gotten off those slippery racing hard tires here and uh we're moving do we have a game out here All right, so Ryan's now trying to open the gap up here a little bit. He's got four tenths of a second. He's gotten some help from Petrolhead here. Petrolhead has slotted himself in front of uh, Toombox here as well. And both these drivers essentially need to finish ahead of this driver to gain points on this driver in the point standing. So right now, Ryan's and Petrolhead have done enough to get ahead of Toombox. But the bigger question is strategy. How are the strategies going to play out for these drivers at the end of the race? Right now, this is kind of just all for nothing. I mean, these guys are just battling. They're switching positions around, but it really all comes down to that strategy at the end of the day here. So we got Jay and Lone Wolf Racing, and 
I'm a little perplexed by this. You know, Lone Wolf has tried to make that pass on the outside on Daytona here two or three or four laps in a row now on a car, and just clearly, obviously, that, that isn't working, so I don't understand why you just won't tuck in, give a little push to the driver in front, and work on catching SoCal up in front there. He did take a look on the inside there, and woof, Jay getting a very wide exit, having to go hard defensive there, and Lone Wolf is going to tuck right back in. He's going to take a look on the inside of the next corner there. There's going to be a penalty for some reason there for uh, Jay said. I didn't see any um, track limit violations there. Maybe on the exit of turn one there, he went a little bit wide. Maybe that's where it got picked up, but Lone Wolf Racing is going to win that battle here. Uh, we got Jay in sixth. We got Nolander in seventh. We got Egon in eighth. We got Jumper Driver in ninth place, and Dennis here in tenth position. So, don't count Dennis out yet, guys. I'm telling you. He just starts getting into a rhythm here. He is a dangerous driver. All right, so Raya's here in first place. You can see Toombox trying to respond on Petrol here. He got a good run through the left-hander coming into NASCAR 1 and 2, but uh, Petrol also got a good run and just enough speed there to keep Toombox from getting down inside of him there, so he's going to put the uh, championship points leader in behind him here for the time being in third place. Toombox is uh, he's a smart driver. You can see he's not trying to make that pass on the outside. He's more than aware that that's not going to happen uh, on the banking here, and he's just going to settle in his line Ooh, that was a very wide exit there from toombox and that could pay for yes sir a half second track limit penalty and that's not what he needed there that is going to pull him out of the slipstream of first and second place and boy oh boy for rise and petrol head right now this is a best case scenario they've just broken the toe to the championship points leader that is going to cost a good second uh, of time there to tomb box and now he's gonna have to make it all up in the infield here It didn't cost him as much as we typically seen so he got a pretty decent run out of that penalty sector And I'm not sure how that happened to be honest with you there uh, Those guys should have pulled away from him and opened that up to about a second and a half at that point, but they didn't so um, interesting and it good for Toombox because he is right still on the tail end of that slipstream there. So uh, that, that really should have worked out better for Petrol Head and Rise, but it, for some reason it did not there. That was very interesting. Very interesting. Great job by Toombox to manage that penalty and still stay in striking distance here. SoCal has six seconds to that pack in front. These guys have just been battling back here. They're in their own little race back here and, and, and just continue to lose that front group because of the, the continuing little battling for positions here. So if the five of these guys all linked up together and were able to push nose to tail cleanly for an, uh, even a half a dozen laps, I bet we would see that gap drop to three seconds instead of six seconds. Just my opinion. Got no lander here in seventh. We got Egon in eighth. We got Drummer Driver here in ninth place, and we got F1 Dennis here in tenth. And I suspect that we're going to see a much different race in Division Two and Division One compared to what we've seen here in Division Three. A big moment coming into the bus stop there from Rias, and that is going to be a run for Petrol Head there on the outside. Now that's a tough pass, but again, like I said, if you get the better run than the driver that was in front of you, that is about the only way you're going to get that pass done on the outside. So now Toombox has the decision to make which car. Is he going to push here to get ahead of the other one? And, he, you know, he opted to go with Petrolhead here. So that was an interesting choice there. I think I would have pushed Petrolhead through and uh, put Rias in behind because that's the guy that's closest to me in the point standings. But you have to make a decision there. And he did take, obviously, the inside line. But Petrolhead comes back with a cutback. And as first and second place continue to battle it out here, Toombox is just sitting in behind waiting for his moment to strike now. Petrolhead is going to take the race lead back over Rias here. And, you know, these three just continue to fight it out. That is eventually going to allow this pack to catch up. So the more that these three now start to continue to battle it out for that first place position here on lap 7 of 25, uh, the better chance they are letting the pack close back in here. So Toombox, he's playing the patient game here right now. He's playing out of the three drivers right now. I think he's probably playing at the safest. You know, he's still left himself in this battle, but he's not the one pushing the offensive uh, strategy here. He's just sitting in behind these two. He's probably short shifting, saving a little fuel, and in doing so, he's probably saving some tire. Meanwhile, you got Petrolhead and Rias just absolutely fighting it out for first place wearing out their race cars wearing down their tires burning off extra fuel Toombox right now is in a very very good position early on in this race in my opinion 
SoCal here in fourth place. I mean, he's just kind of all on his own now. He doesn't have anybody to slipstream off of, so he doesn't have anybody to share uh, the short shift in behind and save a little bit of fuel. But uh, he has broken free from that to that middle pack here a little bit. He is trying to close in on that front group. That gap is still 6.2 seconds, so no gain there. But he does have Lone Wolf, or, whoops, Lone Wolf Racing closing in here in fifth place and behind as well. And again, this is our defending Division Three champion from Season 1 here with our McLaren Series last season. So uh, he is right there. He got a great exit through the bus stop, and he's actually tucked in behind SoCal here. Now, the big question is, do they start to work together? So we have not seen a whole lot of that from this group here so far today. We got Jay said here in sixth place. He's got Nolander just in behind with Egon just in behind them. We've got Drummer Driver here in ninth. He's about 5.7 seconds. And F1 Dennis is 10 seconds behind. He was 13 seconds behind after the pit stop. So that is noted. And we still got these guys battling it out for first and second place here at the beginning of this group. And then we got Toombox chilling right now. I bet you when he goes into pit lane, he is going to have... 10% more fuel than both these guys battling it out hard for first place right now. Let's take a look, right? All right, we got uh, that, we got that. Petrol actually has more fuel than Ryas does, and Toombox has way more fuel and tire than both of them combined. <laughs> both of them so uh in point in case toombox being a very strategic racer here right now and this is why he's a championship points leader and there you go see this battling is hard battling between petrol head and rias up in front literally just opened up a freebie here for toombox he's going to move up into second place thank you very much for the mistake petrol head now he's going to dive down the inside and toombox you can see he is not panicking here he's not worried about the battling going on he's not worried about the pressure he's receiving from these guys right now he just stayed his line stayed his course and finds himself still sitting in second place even after the uh, attack back from Petrol Head there. So now Petrol Head, he, he's, he's got a choice to make. Are we going to let Rise drive away or are we going to work together to make sure that he does not get too far away? And it looks like Petrol Head's going to make the decision to push Toombox here. And that's probably the smart thing to be doing right now. You don't want to let that race leader get away. So here we go. All the battling, I told you, all that battling is eventually going to allow these guys to gain time. It was six point, almost 6.3 seconds before those guys started battling on that last lap. SoCal, without any help by himself, has knocked three quarters of a second out of that group just from that battling early on in the infield sector. Lone Wolf Racing is still right there just outside of the slip. We got Jay Steele right there in sixth place. Nolander is just off in behind him there. Egon in eighth. Drummer Driver in ninth. And Dennis coming, man. He, he's taken another second. Um almost out of the back side of the pack here so keeping in mind i think he's already made a pit stop here in this race as well so he's going to be uh one stop advantage on the rest of the field here right now as well So it is Ryas here in the race lead right now. Uh, Petrolhead is the fastest driver currently in the race right now, the 145.973. Now that's uh, about a second off of our qualifying fastest time here so far, but this is racing conditions, so we're not surprised to see that this early on. And these guys are on the medium tires here right now, not the soft tires as well. So uh, the fact that a 45.9 is our fast lap there goes to say a lot from a driver on medium tires right now. So Ryas making a big mistake coming out uh, into NASCAR 1 and 2. You've seen a big slide that forced him really high up into the banking. And Doombox, again, that patience, that patient driving, just not fighting and just letting these guys do their thing has now put him back in the lead of this race. And he has more tire and more fuel than the two guys in behind him chasing right now. I think Petrolhead is aware of that. You can see that right rear tire is really starting to show uh, its wear and tear on that car. We got SoCal here in fourth place. The gap is now under five seconds, 4.6 seconds. So they are closing in on Petrol Head here. Lone Wolf Racing again starting to close back in on SoCal. We've got Jayset in sixth place here. He's 2.8 seconds in behind those two up front. We've got Nolander a little bit further in behind Jay here now. We've got Egon in ninth. Drummer Driver still in tenth. And Dennis closing in here. Um, sorry, a drummer driver in ninth, and Dennis in 10th place, closing in here on our ninth place driver, uh, lap by lap, lap by lap. Pretty good racing going on here so far by our Division 3 group.
And you know, Toombox just you can see he is just not stressing here. He's not uh he's not being a defensive driver here right now. He understands that we are not even halfway through this race yet. There is no point in wearing his car out right now. Uh big slide there from Toombox on the exit there. That should allow Rias to close in a little bit there. You can see the time coming down, so Rias will close back in on him there. And Petrol Head here is trying as well. Two point three seconds in behind here right now. We got SoCal, so Petrol's actually opened the gap back up a little bit here on SoCal put it back to five seconds uh lone wolf racing closing in here as well so he is definitely right there on socal's uh back fin here now basically and that is coming into the le mans chicane here so we're going to keep an eye on the run now it's tough being the chasing car because you have a little bit of dirty air to factor in there but uh, it looks like both those guys handled that well and you can see a little bit of a gap opened up there as, as lone wolf having to make a little bit of a tougher corner there we got nolander in seventh place uh, jay's up in sixth there we've got egon here in eighth drummer driver is closing in on egon here and we got Toombox coming into pit lane early here um compared to the rest of the field so we've got dennis here he is is eight seconds and still coming down he's closing all right so Toombox has made a pit stop here and he's going to come into pit lane with 56 percent fuel i would say petrol head is about close to where he is on fuel uh but other than that uh, he's definitely got a fuel advantage on the rest of the field except for Petrol head is about on a similar fuel strategy, it looks like here. They got about the same, but Rise is definitely burning off a little more fuel uh, up in front here. So, 2.7 second gap here from Rise to Petrol head right now. We got SoCal here. He is six seconds in behind, and he's got Lone Wolf Racing uh, closing in on him here. Lone Wolf gets a nice corner right there, heading into NASCAR 1 and 2, and that is going to absolutely pull him right back up into SoCal here. And Jay says in behind there also, uh, dwindling down a little bit of time here as well. You can see it's not quite as significant, but he is 1.3 seconds out. He's almost in the toe of these two here, and that can be really really big for these three guys here uh, at this point in the race now with that with that lead group kind of broken up there that slipstream is not their advantage to their advantage here anymore so uh, a group of two or three cars in the mid pack right now really could start to take a dent out of that gap Egon here in seventh Toombox has come out in behind Egon here and I suspect we're probably going to see another quick pit stop coming from Toombox here Dennis is uh, right there six seconds in behind and now he's ahead of drummer driver by 14 seconds so it's going to be interesting to see how Dennis's race works out for him again. He had to come in and adapt to his car without any uh, any information on how his car is handling because he was unable to make qualifying here today. Got the car out just in time for racing conditions. So a uh, great job by the crew to get that car out on track. But he had to definitely adapt to that thing on the fly here. And he is just starting to make his way back up into the pack here now. So again, I said he's a very efficient driver. Don't key out him out of anything. And uh, at the halfway point, he's in the pack now. So yeah, it, it really is going to be interesting to see how it all works out here. And just the simplest of mistakes here um, with this car around the track here today seems to be making a lot of difference to these drivers in their positioning as well. Small little mistakes have been costing positions here today. We've seen a lot of that up in that front group battle. And I mean, Lone Wolf, is he is right there. He's really putting some pressure on there. And uh, he's trying to set SoCal up for the position change here. That's going to put him up in the third place as he gets the uh, optimal line down the banking there. He's on the inside. And he is going to slot right up in front of SoCal there. So SoCal and Lone Wolf Racing now linked up here. And SoCal is going to give a position away to Lone Wolf Racing here. But again, at the midway point of the race, there's not a whole lot to be worrying about right now. It's all about just trying to continue to put in the fastest laps you can every lap around right now. And continue to close gaps. So SoCal's in that slip now. He's in a good spot. Jay set Nolander, 5th to 6th place, just a little bit separated there. We got Egon in 7th, we got F1 Dennis in 8th now, we got Drummer Driver in 9th, and Toombox here in 10th, as I suspected he was going to jump off of those tires quite quickly, and that is exactly what we see. So, some varying strategies here in the field today, that is interesting as well. 
Ooh, big slide there for petrol. Two and a half seconds is that gap right now between Arias and Petrol Head. Uh, if the race were to finish right now for any reason, Toombox would be not in an ideal situation, but thankfully for him, there's still 13 laps remaining, including the lap that we're on now, and that's not going to be the case most likely. But right now, if the race were to end exactly where these drivers are placed, Toombox would be uh, potentially not in the lead coming into the finale. So, um, Thankfully, like I said, there's still 13 laps remaining in the race for Toombox here, but uh, he has cleared his tires. So, I mean, he is good to go now to the end of the race if that is what is on his mind here. And again, SoCal and Lone Wolf Racing, they've been playing pretty nice here for the last, I would say, probably eight or nine laps here. They have finally swapped those positions. Lone Wolf got a good run out of them coming out of this corner, took the position down on the inside of the banking here, and, and they got TTJ set just in behind. He's trying to close in on these two the best he can here as well. It was 1.7 through at the beginning of this lap. He's taken a little chunk of time out of those two there, but as they get tucked in on the straightaway here and behind each other and using that slipstream, you can see that cap is starting to grow a little bit again. So it's one car versus two. It's very tough. The one car will always be better than the two cars, most likely coming through the technical part of the track, uh, the launch chicane, the infield sector. We'll see uh, Jay most likely gain a little bit of time on, on those two through those sectors. But then when we get to the banking here, this is kind of where that slipstream becomes a little overpowering and, and typically can... Um, make the difference here but you can see Jay got a really good run through the Le Mans chicane there and not only is that time starting to grow as they head to the tri oval there so he did a pretty good job to gain at least a tenth there by the time he comes to the start finish line on those two we got rise now in pit lane he's making his pit stop at 35 percent fuel in the tank there as he makes his first stop so strategies are now at play here petrol head still out in the lead of this race that puts lone wolf racing and socal up at the second and third place that puts tt's j set up at the fourth and he is right on these two here now as they're coming into the international horseshoe a little battle for position here this is for second and third place between socal socal and lone wolf racing i don't think it was much of a battle i think it was just uh he got a good run he took the inside line because that was the open line and and they just played nice and they just kind of didn't want to slow each other down there so i don't think that was necessarily a battle i think that was just two drivers taking good clean lines with clean racing air through the corner there and and uh not trying to slow each other down here so we do have this three-way train here and now i guess it comes down to whether or not these guys want to work together or battle it out here for these positions 5.8 seconds is the gap to the race leader here right now so you know it's been the bobbling between five and six seconds pretty much all race long from that second group to the first group here uh so it'd be interesting to see if these three can start to put a little bit of damage into that gap here now because it is just petrol by himself right now up front Oh, beautiful lines by all three of those drivers coming out of Lamont Chicane. Lone Wolf got a great run through there. He actually opens up the gap a little bit on SoCal and Jay set there. Uh, Nolander here in fifth place. He's 3.8 seconds off the back of that pack right now. We got Egon, Raya's, and Dennis here in sixth, seventh, and eighth place. So there we go. F1 Dennis. He's right there, man. He's making his way uh, up through the field. We got Toombox here in ninth place. He's only a couple spots uh, in behind Raya's there now. And as these pit stop sequences continue to go through here, uh, we should uh, have a better idea of what we're looking at here towards the end of the race. The drummer driver here in 10th place. We've got uh, Egon, Jay, pretty much the whole field coming into pit lane here. Jay is not in pit lane. Jay has opted to stay out for one more lap here. Nolander, same thing. He's just opted to go around one more time. Uh, Ryaz has made a pit stop. You can see Petrohead just coming out of pit lane there. He's going to come out into fifth place in behind Dennis and Ryaz there. Got Dennis now up at the fourth place. We've got Petrohead in fifth. SoCal coming out of pit lane here. He's in sixth. We got Lone Wolf Racing coming out in seventh with Toombox coming around turn one at speed here. He's going to settle right in between Lone Wolf Racing and Egon coming out of pit lane here in ninth place. And that still has Drummer Driver here in tenth position. So there we go. Jay still has yet a pit stop to make here as well. And I'm assuming we'll probably see that stop in the near future here from himself and Nolander, which will give Rias the race lead back. So let's see where everybody ends up here. Now, 
some drivers still owe another stop. Some drivers have cleared all their stops or are looking for a long push here, maybe uh, on the soft tires. I'm not, we have seen some different strategies here out of this division today. So it's, it's really hard to speculate which one is going to be the best strategy here today. We're just going to have to wait and find out, let it play out. I do suspect we're going to see a pit stop coming from Jay Nolander and at some point probably F1 Dennis here in the near future as well. So there it is, JSEC comes into pit lane, Nolander comes into pit lane, so that's going to give rise to race lead back here. And fastest lap, 145.117, Dennis does come in as well, Petrahead coming back into pit lane here as well to clear his final stop. That lone wolf racing coming into pit lane so a lot of the drivers are doing their pit stop sequences right now at this point of the race it leaves rise out in the race lead uh we've got jay here in second place after his second after his pit stop here that puts him out in front of nolander who is now just ahead of Toombox right now currently in fourth place but keeping in mind Toombox has cleared both his stops so he is good to go to the end if that's what he is thinking about f1 dennis here he comes out in fifth place he stopped early so this driver i told you not to count f1 dennis out I, I did i not say that chat he's currently up in the fifth place here right now and he's cleared all his tire stops we got petrol head here in sixth place we got socal in seventh we got lone wolf racing in eighth he's cleared his stops drummer driver has cleared his stops egon's in clearing his stops right now um that leaves rias that leaves jay set that leaves nolander and I believe SoCal with a stop yet. All right, so our race leader has a 12.7 second gap over Jay set. Jay has 5.8 seconds over our championship points leader, Toombox, who's on some scrubbed in soft tires at this point got no lander here in fourth place just in behind him so Toombox has made his way around no lander recently we've got f1 dennis here in fifth place with petrol head very close behind in sixth we've got socal here in seventh with lone wolf racing in eighth place about four seconds in behind so we got jay coming into pit lane here right now that'll give Toombox uh second place back no lander also coming in so that should give dennis uh potentially third place here as he comes around And there we have it, F1 Dennis up into P3. Petrohead follows him through into fourth place. SoCal is going to come through. He's going to be in fifth. We got Lone Wolf Racing coming around the corner there in sixth place. We got Jay. He's just topping up on some fuel here. And he is out of pit lane. So let's see where everybody settles in. This driver still owes a pit stop. 18 seconds is the gap here currently over Toombox. We have F1 Dennis here now in third place. He's got Petrol Head chasing in fourth position. We've got SoCal here in fifth place. We've got Lone Wolf racing up into sixth ahead of Nolander, who's ahead of Jay Set. So he jumped him in pit lane there. We got Drummer Driver here in ninth place. So we got Egon here in tenth position. So. One driver still owing a pit stop here, potentially two. I think uh, I think SoCal may still owe, or I just missed it, but we have one for sure. Potentially two drivers still owing a pit stop here today as well. I think SoCal made his extra stop here, though. All right, gap 18.4, so no change there. 
F1 Dennis, 10 seconds in behind Toombox. I told you, this guy could really throw a wrench in the in the program here today. We got Petrolhead here in fourth place. We got SoCal here in fifth. We got Lone Wolf Racing in sixth place. He's got Nolander chasing in seventh. And Jason is tucked yeah, right underneath Nolander here in eighth place. And Nolander is going to try and get it done on the outside here. Oh boy, let's see how this all works out here. Lots of speed these boys are coming in with here. Good little push from Jade on Nolander. Side-by-side -side action between Lone Wolf Racing and Nolander. Thanks to the help from Jay setting behind. And Nolander is going to get that job done on the outside into turn one. That was a great push assist by Jay there. And great uh, car management by Nolander to get that done on the outside. Nolander now finds himself up at the sixth place. And now Jay finds himself trying to work on Lone Wolf Racing here in seventh place ahead of him. So uh, good little push there by Jay said yeah they get Nolander uh, get Nolander through on the outside there now Jay said just uh, waiting for an opportunity here to try and attack as well nice little battle right there got drummer driver there in ninth we got Egon in the 10th position here so it is Raya's Jr. still in the lead and slowly but surely Toombox is just ticking away on that gap now I'm not sure what the what the pit delta is without fuel so uh, I don't know how close that this is going to come down to between Raya's and Toombox here but it's looking to be fairly close we got Petrol Head here in fourth, and F1 Dennis is starting to drive away from him. Uh, F1 Dennis is uh, still at about that 10 second gap to Toombox and Rias up ahead here, but he is maintaining that 1.2, 1.3 second gap to fourth place driver Petrol Head right now. SoCal seven seconds in behind those two. No Landers five seconds in behind him, and leading this little three uh, trio group here. And Jay Sets now found himself around Lone Wolf Racing, trying to track back down into No Lander, and Lone Wolf Racing is in Jay's slipstream. I'm trying to track down Jay here again and uh, this is going to be I think a continuing battle here towards the end of this race between these three drivers here battling it out for uh, 6th, 7th and 8th place here overall and there we go Lone Wolf's going to try and get it done on the outside here Jay's holding that inside line ooh a big wiggle there and uh, and he's just going to hold that position there from Lone Wolf Racing Lone Wolf Racing realizing uh, seeing compromised position of the car in front there and just uh, just lift it up off the throttle a little bit to make sure he didn't get into the back end of that car there that was great recognition there from Lone Wolf Racing and that is why these guys are here racing each other absolutely huge huge decision making happening on the racetrack it just goes to show the quality of the racing here in division three so it's Rias here, 18.5 over Toombox. He's got 10.5 over Dennis. Petrol Head here in fourth place, losing touch with Dennis a little bit here, almost two seconds now. So Cal is he's still no man's land. He's been here for most of the race. He's just chilling, doing his thing here in fifth place. We've got Nolander in sixth position, still trying to keep that gap opened up on Jay Set here in seventh place. Uh, Lone Wolf Racing is still right there, tucked into the slipstream here as well in 8th place. We got Drummer Driver in ninth, and we got Egon here in 10th position. So, working on a personal best lap right there. Alright, so Rise is starting to open up the gap here. Now, fuel's close. Toombox has more than enough fuel here. However, he went in really, really early on those soft tires. So, as you can see, that right rear is starting to find its way down into the uh, starting to feel it range. We've got F1 Dennis there in third place. No uh, petrol head there, sorry, not no lander in fourth place. They're really pushing to try and close up on Dennis. There. He's seen made a mistake coming into turn one there. It's just going to cost him more time on F1 Dennis. We've got uh, SoCal here in fifth place. We got no lander in sixth position. We've got Lone Wolf Racing here in seventh with Jay still tucked in there in behind in eighth place. So they've swapped positions here uh, recently as well. Got drummer, uh, sorry, drummer driver here. I don't know why I'm hitting buttons and it's not going to where I would like it to. Will we please work nicely, keyboard? Thank you. All right, so we're gonna have five to go once Rias comes across the tri oval here. So coming out of NASCAR 4 right now, coming through the tri-oval here. And before to go.
got Toombox in second place. The gap is now 20.6 seconds. So I, again, I don't know what that delta is. Uh, maybe some of the drivers in the chat know what that delta is, but is it, I'm not sure what the delta is. So I can't, I assume it's going to be very close between the two once Ryus comes out of pit lane and he is going to be on a tire disadvantage in a sense, but Toombox is going to be on pretty worn out soft tires. So it's going to be interesting to see how that works out. We got Nolander here in sixth place. We got Lone Wolf Racing in seventh. Uh, starting to break free a little bit from Jay here, trying to get a Jay, Jay out of that slipstream here to alleviate that pressure from behind. And we got Egon and Drummer Driver rounding out our field here. A great little battle here still for 6, 7, and 8th place. This is kind of where the battle is right now. Uh, it always seems to be right in the mid-back during these races. This is where all the, the real good action is. So we're just kind of keeping our eye on it right now. Uh, I mean, uh, there's a 20 second gap between 1st and 2nd. There's 10 seconds between 2nd and 3rd. There's you know, a growing gap between third and fourth place. SoCal's in no man's land here as he's trying to continue to stay ahead of Nolander and Lone Wolf Racing and J-Set in behind. I think J-Set has just slightly lost touch with these two here. We don't quite see his car coming into the picture here. So let's see where he's at. He's about three quarters of a second in behind here right now as these two move up in towards the tri-oval here. Ooh, a little bit of a tap there from Lone Wolf Racing coming in a little hot. You can see he just tried to go on the outside there to avoid that contact. It was such a minor contact. That didn't even phase the two drivers at all. But what it did allow was Jay set to close back up a little bit into turn one there on Lone Wolf Racing as well. So, interesting battle here. This is definitely going to start to kick off near the end of this race, I think. Uh, what do we got here? We got Ryus here. He's in red and fuel. So, we should be seeing a pit stop. Maybe not this time around, but probably next lap around. Again, Toombox is good on fuel here. F1 Dennis looks like he's good on fuel and he has got some tires and he's going to go steal fastest lap while he's at it with 145.166 last time around there. And he is purple as he goes around again this time. So the spoiler is in the house. Ooh, big moment there for Nolander and that is going to be good enough for Lone Wolf Racing to get on the outside and get the momentum to get the pass done there so that was a big moment from Nolander there and Lone Wolf Racing almost had to check up a little bit just to see where Nolander was going to end up on that banking corner so he could choose his line there and he is not going to clear Nolander coming into the Le Mans chicane here and we're going to go side by side through the bus stop no Nolander is just going to back out there he's going to try and get the run coming out of the Le Mans chicane and try to respond back but he went really wide on exit and that is going to cost Nolander with a penalty and there it is. Just didn't quite get the exit. Le Mans came right there. And he is going to pay the price uh, from race officials. There with a half second track limit penalty. That is unfortunate. He's in a huge battle there right now. And that is definitely going to put him a little bit on the back foot. With a couple laps to go here as those guys get around to the tri -oval. And of course that penalty serving zone or electronic enforcement penalty serving zone here in Gran Turismo is uh, just after NASCAR 4 when you when the track flattens back out. So it is in a crucial spot of momentum lose, uh, losing momentum here on this racetrack. It's a spot where the cars are at their absolute top speed and you are going to lose a few miles an hour and if somebody's close enough you're just going to get gobbled up so uh, that's a really unfortunate there for Nolander you can see Toombox they got it back down to under 20 seconds Dennis is cruising he's got that gap down to seven seconds uh, he is moving right now 
and didn't look like that penalty cost him a position there uh, to J sets. So uh, fortunate there for Nolanders. He could have definitely been on uh, that back foot there in eighth place, but that has given Lone Wolf Racing a little bit of breathing room. And here we go. Our race leader's coming in to pit lane. It's going to be two laps on the hard tires. He's got absolutely no fuel left in the tank of that car. Let's see if tomb box strategy is enough today. It has been a battle of strategies between tomb box and Raya's and petrol hit all season long. And it's all coming to fruition here right now again. So tomb box is going to come around. And tomb box is going to take over the race lead. Now, keeping in mind he has got some very worn down soft tires there f1 dennis is actually going to be putting the pressure on Rias jr here as well so Rias does not only need to concern himself with tomb box he's now ahead of him by three and a half four seconds and with a soft tire compared to the hard tire he's also got to worry about f1 dennis in third place literally less than two seconds in behind him with two laps to go also on the soft tire and his soft tires are in much better shape than our race leaders tires so Rias is uh, potentially looking at even a third place finish here if he cannot hold off F1 Dennis so Toombox has done everything right here today and we called it early on we've seen him not fighting with Rias and Petrolhead in this race he was playing smart he was saving fuel he was saving his tires and that fuel saving has allowed Toombox to gain the track advantage plain and simple And this is why Toombox is leading the Division Three Championship this season. He has been almost flawless this season. Uh, the only kink in his armor is T.T. Rice Jr. has really come in and put the absolute pressure on him with race pace and stealing a couple race wins away from him. But Toombox has ran almost a perfect season this season here in Division Three against this field. And today's strategy seems to be no different. So here we go. This is the battle here now. Rice has one to go as we're coming out of NASCAR 4. He's got F1 Dennis absolutely absolutely beaming down on him here right now and uh let's see if dennis is going to make the pass here or if dennis is going to leave him hold on to second position here now this is kind of the next question i guess i don't think so i think dennis is going to move right up the inside coming into turn one he's gonna be like i'm gonna take second place mate i started in last year today with zero laps uh so there he goes position four second place at one and done he gets the job done into turn one he even uh flashed Rias there to let him know that he was going to be making that move into turn one here and Rias has given it his all to fight back here with f1 dennis but it's all for naught here is a tire advantage it's just too extreme between the two cars f1 dennis is going to get the power down he's going to get better grip on the road uh on the soft run and he is going to start to pull that gap over Rias on these longer runs a little bit of an error under braking there from Dennis he's definitely given Rias an opportunity to fight back here but I think it's going to be all for nothing here once we hit the uh, NASCAR 1 and 2 Tomb box coming around into NASCAR uh, 1 and 2 right now let's go see what's happening back here uh, in this battle we got Jay and Nolander battling it out here a little bit of contact there between the two cars and Noel Racing almost taking advantage here oh boy we got a good battle happening in the mid pack here but we do need to stay with our race leaders a little bit here as well so we don't miss him coming across that start finish line but we're definitely going to be trying to oh no lone wolf racing oh got a little bit sideways coming out of the corner he does keep the car moving forward but boy that was unfortunate he's probably gonna get a penalty for that too as well oh you hate to see it on the last lap lone wolf racing just a little too hard on that throttle there and he is uh he, he's gonna be a big loser out of that mid-pack battle unfortunately that's gonna take him out of the charge for those position battles and uh unless those guys make a mistake up in front of him there that is unfortunate but it is going to be tomb box with the better strategy here today and a race win f1 den is coming in from the back of the pack no qualifying going to drive all the way up into second place if the rise junior is going to find himself in third here today petrol head just off the podium here today in fourth place and that should secure a championship title here for tomb box now with that race win here today barring officiating we've got socal coming through in fifth place it's going to be rad nolander coming through here he's going to hold on to sixth place uh, it's going to be ttj set in seventh it's going to be lone wolf racing heartbreaking eight there he was really right there too to fight those guys at the end and just made that small mistake coming into the banking We've got drummer driver here in ninth place that was a good runner a good run pardon me here for drummer driver and 
we got Egon rounding out our field here in 10th place today. That was a great race from our Division Three guys and gals here in the racing day, wasn't it? And, uh, that was great stuff. All right, congratulations to Toombox, and that should be enough, uh, as I said, to secure a championship here now for him. That was a nine-point lead. Uh, he finished a couple spots ahead of Rise. Our fastest lap's going to go to Dennis, so it's going to put him at about a 13 or 14-point advantage over TT's Rise here for the finale, and that is going to be a big, big, big points gain to try and get in one round of racing. So uh, not, for, not, not, not set in stone. It's definitely still doable, but in pretty good shape to win a championship here is Toombox with the race win today. It's going to be F1 Dennis all the way from the back of the pack to second place here today with a 145-166 fastest lap as well. Arias Jr. in third place, Petrohead in four, SoCal with a good solid fifth place run today. Nolander in sixth, Jset in seventh, Lone Wolf Racing in eighth, and uh, repeat championships here looking like it is a little out of reach here now for him this season. We got Drummer Driver in ninth place and Egon in 10th position. So there is our field. We're just going to take those screenshots just in case we need the backup results. And we're going to save the replay just in case. All right. Let's flip screens. Let's go get into our interview box here. All right. So we're just going to sit tight here. We're going to see if any of these guys are going to pop in and have a word with us. And it's not mandatory. It's just something we do in between the races while the races are being set up. Oh, we got one of the drivers in. All right, let's go. To that screen. There we go. Who do we got? Ah, we got our race winner in here. All right, let's talk with our race winner here first. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So our race winner is here with us in the box here. So let's talk to our race winner, Toombox, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, another great race here today. You and TT Rise Jr. have really been battling out here in the latter part of the season for race wins and those ever so important points leading into the uh, finale coming up in two weeks' time. Uh, really tough race, a lot on the line here today, and your strategy was really on point today. Great racing by you. Great decision making as well early on in the race. Talk us through your race today and follow it up with some shout outs and thank yous to the viewers watching at home. Um, watching, I was, I was trying to keep a close eye on the gap after Rice made his first pit stop and keeping it within like 18 to 20 seconds. I was like, okay, we should be able to, we should be able to hold on to the win. Um, practice yesterday, I kept, um, I was just basically seeing how long I can go on the soft tire. Um, 15 laps was the, the maximum. I did 14 this race. Um, I knew the, the back, the, the rear right was going to be a problem to an extent, but during the infield section, you're not really using the right rear all that much. So, um, yeah, it was definitely a tough race because, um, having to race someone that you can't physically see in front of you trying to you know just match or if not beat their pace it was definitely tough but yeah rice we've been we've been going at it all season um he's definitely a great competitor um has some really good races with him this season um shout outs to my viewers quick shout out to one in particular repo man he's making a, a special livery for the finale in two weeks uh yeah Awesome. Well, we love that. You know, uh, our communities behind us are always our driving force when we're competing or when we're just making regular content or whatever it is we're doing. So we love to hear that. Love to hear the shout out back to the community for sure. And I can't wait to see that special livery, of course, coming for uh, our finale weekend here in two weeks time. But, you know, great racing. And I just want to touch on something early in the race. You know, you and Petrolhead and Rias were in a good deadlock battle for the for the top spot there in that first stint. And the one thing that I did notice in that is you didn't seem too concerned about that positioning where you were in that battle as long as you were 
in the battle, in the slip, still right there to be able to take advantage of a mistake or potentially, uh, you know, those two hitting each other and maybe getting them both. Was that exactly what was going through your mind there in that first stint? Yeah, when they were when they were battling, um, I, I just said, I'm going to stay behind, save some fuel. And I think part a, a big part of that was how I won today. Um, I was when I was leading the race, I, I didn't think I was in the best position. And then Rice took the lead from me. And then I think in the same lap, um, Petra had also passed me. Um, and then I can't remember what lap it was, but I got a penalty going into the bus stop. And I was like, thought that would have been the end of the race for me. But I like they weren't cooperating. So like between, you know, me serving the penalty and like getting back onto the, the bank in the, in the next lap, I was able to, to close out like close up the gap and then go back to my, my fuel saving strat. I, I was able to save a good amount of fuel behind them. Um, and yeah, I just, I just kind of sat back, let them do what they were going to do. I was keeping a close eye on the gap behind us, the fourth, they were like fluctuating between fifth, like five and seven, seven. Yeah. Can't talk five and seven seconds back. So I was like, all right, I can just chill here for a little bit, um, save some fuel. And once the pit stops start kicking off, then I'll be, I'll be off to do my own thing. Absolutely. And I mean, at the end of the day, that was a, that was a winning strategy here and, and put yourself in a really great position to take a championship home uh, in two weeks time. You got yourself a nice little points cushion. So just got to get that car home safe and sound uh, in round 10. And, and we should be crowning Toombox as our division three champion this season. But congratulations on a great race and potentially locking in that championship. Thank you. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have this guy here. And in my opinion, if there was a driver of the day award, during these races, it belongs to this man right here. F1 Dennis comes in here today. A little bit of trouble. Couldn't get the car over qualifying. Gets on track just in time for racing conditions. Gets put in the back of the pack. And I said at the beginning of the broadcast, watch out for this guy. He's a good racer. And here we are talking to him. Standing on the second highest step in second place. Great drive out there. Uh, talk, I guess talk to us about what your strategy was coming in with zero warm-up time or familiarity with the car on the track after getting out of the paddock. And, and and, and did you expect to see yourself standing on the podium at the end of the day today? Hey, uh, first of all, thank you. Um, it was a great race. I didn't expect to be uh, on the podium today, but I take the off strategy going on hearts at the beginning that I can take the mediums and can push on my own and don't have traffic in front of me. I guess this was the key for me to uh, come to the podium today and to have a nice push at the end with the softs. It was very close with Sander at the end. I guess he was struggling with his tires. Um, I wait 10, 10 laps before the end to take my soft that I can push all the way, but I'm happy that it went through. Absolutely, and uh, you actually caught our Rias there. He had, he was on a, uh, the Hamilton strategy. He finished his race off on the hard tires, so uh, that that's why it was so easy for you to catch up and, and find your way around him there because uh, he was just on that opposite strategy of everybody else. And uh, unfortunately for him today, it didn't work out as well as he was hoping. Going to still finish in third place there, but great drive from you today. I mean, the cool, calm, collected, and like you said, pretty smart decision there. You just kept yourself in open air. By midway through the race, you were in the back of the pack, and then that pit stop strategy just really worked out for you and your soft tire management was really incredible so uh i mean great racing today congratulations like i said coming in not with a, not with a whole lot of knowledge on your car uh, just adapting to it very quickly and, and driving a phenomenal race so uh, anything you want to add to your race here today and any shout outs or thank yous you'd like to send out to the viewers watching at home first of all thank you and uh thanks all of the guys in the league for the nice racing and uh, shout out to to my community who watched the whole race, Milano, Daniel, and uh, Kevin. I really enjoyed it today. Thank you. Awesome. We appreciate that. And congratulations on an absolutely spectacular race here today and fastest lap point for F1 Dennis too as well, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, we'll let you get back to that paddock and go enjoy enjoy that celebration with your friends there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so great first set of races here from division number three. Let's go back and let's set up 
division number two. All right, so they are ready to go for us here. They are literally waiting on me right now. So let me do a quick couple little changes in some stream graphics and we'll get the division number two underway for everybody here. All right. Welcome in, everybody. If you're just tuning in, this is Pure Racing League Season Number 2, the GT3 One Make Series. We are racing these Lexuses, and it is Round 5 of 6. For those of us that have been hanging out all day long, we've just seen an amazing Division 3 race, and what looks to be Toombox securing a championship here one round before the end of the season. Division 2, whole different story, close battle up front still, and looks like we've got 10 of our fast drivers here on the grid today, racing hard, medium, and soft tires are required for this race and it is 25 laps around daytona road course ladies and gentlemen so welcome in let's get ready to do some racing we're going to give the word to race control that we are ready and we are gonna go all right so, again, Daytona Road Course, ladies and gentlemen, for those of us that may just be tuning in, welcome in from Pure Racing League. I'm your host for the evening, GT45 Gaming, family-friendly broadcast on this beautiful Easter Sunday. It is a 3.5, 6-mile racetrack, 5.73 kilometers, has 14 left and right-hand turns. It is a tarmac road surface, real-world circuit. we just seen a great 24-hour race there just a couple of months ago at the end of January, and only has an elevation change of 20 feet, and that elevation change is in the bank banking of the corners so very flat racetrack which makes it very difficult for drivers to use undulations of corners to really get great great corners so you really got to be patient with the corners around daytona so whenever race control is ready to kick it off we will go all right there we go so we're just a couple minutes behind schedule here so not bad so far today we love to see that. We always try to stay on schedule the best we can. All right, we are getting ready for qualifying. All right, let's go find the first driver out on track here. Oh, there it is. All right, we got uh, Bombardier out on track first here so he will lead us out here for our qualifying session in division two that's right ladies and gentlemen we're not seeing the same race repeated over after what we just saw this is division number two we have three divisions on display here for everybody today and we will be finishing off our event here this evening with our division one drivers and that is uh an extremely fast field of drivers and well you guys will have to wait to see the big names in that line up here for about an hour and 20 minutes or so uh for us to get into our division one race but it's definitely not a race you are going to want to miss it is going to be an absolute doozy around daytona here today so what can we expect to see from Division 2 compared to Division 3? We'll probably see a slight improvement on times around the racetrack. Obviously, these guys are pretty much all A-plus tier drivers at this point in this division, so they're very pacey, very effective race car drivers in Division 2 here. It's a very tight competitive field of drivers in Division 2 here as well. I think in qualifying, this whole division was maybe separated by a second or 1.2 seconds in total qualifying time. So it just goes to show how tightly packed this division really is. Um, you know, this is top end A plus drivers, borderline world tour uh, caliber drivers. Uh, I mean, this is this is a absolutely stacked field of drivers. This would typically be a top end pro lobby in most leagues. Here at Pure Racing League, this is Division Two, essentially a pro am division. 
uh, if you break it down like that. These guys are definitely not pro-amp drivers. These are 100% pro-tier drivers, and we're in for an absolute doozy of a race here today. We're going to see a little bit more methodical and strategic, I think, here compared to Division 1. Uh, Division 3, pardon me, that we just seen. And I think we're going to see a lot more slipstreaming and bump drafting happening here in the next two sets of races. That was a great race, wasn't it? We've got Phasecraft coming in with that thumbs up on the Facebook as well. Welcome in, everybody, again, on the Facebook and YouTube channels. We are live on both our major platforms here today. We appreciate everybody. We got uh, 63 views here on the YouTube channel. Let's not forget to like and share that out. Let's get more people checking things out this Easter Sunday. And Facebook is doing Facebook things, you know? Just doing Facebook things. <laughs> All right, so this is just the outlap, so we're not really missing anything here right now. These are the guys just warming their tires up, kind of getting ready to send the flying laps. Oh, this is the flying lap. My apologies here. Uh, well, flying lap number one, and, and Bombardier is, is significantly out ahead of the field here, so he got out nice and early in qualifying here and looking to take full advantage of the 10-minute timer here uh, available to the drivers today in Division 2. I know it says a different name on the screen, but this is as request to the driver to call him Bombardier on the live stream. So you can see that's actually on top of his car there as well. I think he may maybe do that to remind me or something, possibly. But uh, yeah, so that's why we call him Bombardier is as per request from our driver. So 44.428. So already we've seen a uh, better time here from Division 2 than our fastest qualifying time in Division 3. We're not surprised to see that. That, that, that doesn't uh, shock me one bit, actually. So we're going to sit on board with uh, the stake here. Finalized coming through the 151. I didn't realize finalized was in the mix there. We've got uh, drivers all mixed up here by the looks of it. Uh, we got Dino coming in with a 44.5 and Mr. SBS there in third place. Currently they came around, so they were a little out of timing position here on our clock. Hey, the Stig's going to come through. It's going to be there. Finalized. Drops down to six. Mr. Shredder comes up into fourth place. The Stig drops down to seventh place there. Payme is going to take pole position. Lucas is going to jump up into second place right in behind him there. The Stig drops down to ninth. we got Ram Apex GT coming through here for his first lap right now. So he came out late. All right, so... It's SV's Paymay currently sitting in pole position with a 44058, and Lucas right there in behind him, literally half a tenth of a second in behind him. So those two obviously um, were working together that lap time around there, and it has paid huge dividends for them. Uh, they've got currently almost four tenths of a second over Yanis Racing here in third. Bombardier is now sitting in fourth. Let's sit on with a Bombardier here. And a lovely racer jumping in to see what's going on here. Must have realized there was a league race going on and bounced back out. Bombardier made a big mistake here somewhere 15 seconds down on his first lap. Let's stick with Yanis racing here. Uh, we'll see what Yanis does. He's coming in towards uh, the Lamar chicane right now. There's a, there's a group of guys up there. Let's go find those guys. This uh, Bombardier's in there. There we go. Finalized comes through, grabs himself a spot. Oh, there we go. We did see an improvement here from Dino, a 44.3. That's going to put him up into third place, knocking Yanis down another spot there as well. Uh, Peime and Lucas are now coming up to try Oval, and uh, a whole group of guys up ahead of them here too. We'll be keeping our eye on those personal best laps as they come through, see if there's any improvements. The stake improving to a 44.5. That's put him up in sixth place there. And Lucas and Peime going through here side by side, and that is not an improvement for either one of those two drivers. Lucas is going to move up in front there. Ram Apex GT with a 46.2 found himself another improvement here. Alright, we're going to try and sit with this group right here. Finalized is in there. Where is he? He's ninth there. We got Bombardier in there. I believe he's in fourth. No, fifth. All right, we're gonna try and try and catch these guys as they go through here. All 
a little bit of a slide there I think from a Bardier in behind finalize there really shot high up into the banking there and you can see he's actually lost a little pace with finalize there too as well so I don't think we're gonna see an improvement from uh, Bombardier on this lap but we'll see what he's got here I think that's the Stig in, in behind Bombardier there Finalize does improve there. That's good enough there for it's still ninth place. We've got uh, Mr. SBS improving there. He's in sixth place. We got Sushreta here. He's got a penalty, so that's probably not going to be too much of an improvement. Uh, we got Finalize that just went through. We got Ram Apex GT coming through here right now. Just trying to find the guys that are close to the start finish line. We got Payme coming through there. It's a 44 8 from Payme. Lucas is. Jumped into pit lane. Okay. Got Dino here uh, around Apex 45 7. So he continues to find big chunks of time every time around the track here. So he is starting to home in here. Still pay me in pull, provisional pull. Lucas sitting there in second. We've got Dino sitting in third. We've got Yanis currently sitting in third, uh, fourth, pardon me. We've got Bombardier sitting in fifth currently. Mr. SBS sixth. Uh, the Stig in seventh. So Shredda here in eighth place. We've got Finalize currently sitting in ninth. And Ram Apex GT currently sitting in tenth. Now, we've seen, it doesn't matter necessarily where you qualify. That strategy really does play a big factor here in the race. We've seen that in Division 3. We've seen some very different strategies coming from several of the drivers in Division 3. And at the end of the day, the early strategy seemed to have worked out best there for um, uh, Toombox and F1 Dennis. So uh, F1 Dennis coming out without qualifying, getting placed at the back of the pack, zero information on his car today, and found himself with an early aggressive tire strategy up into second place at the end of the race. So strategy really is a key thing around Daytona here and I think we're going to see a pretty strategic race from this group um, knowing that slipstream and bump drafting is going to be so important here to continue to push or lose the field depending on where your position on the track is all right we're trying to find those guys in front of Payme there we go we got Yanis racing right there I think that's Sir Shredda in behind there as well Yanis does not improve, Sir Shredder does not improve, and Payme does not find an improvement there. And this will be the last lap here from our drivers as they come around here. We have uh, six seconds left on our qualifying clock, so the guys will start seeing a uh, checkered flag. Payme made a mistake there. He's uh, just trying to let traffic through there before he turns himself around, so that'll be the end of his qualifying here. Let's, uh, let's stay with uh, Dino here, currently third place. He is purple, actually, as he comes through that sector. He's got, uh, I believe, finalized just up ahead of him there in ninth place as well. So we'll stick with finalized here for a minute as uh, they head into the Le Mans chicane. We got Bombardier in behind them. All right, so finalized coming through here. We got Dino coming through right behind him there. No improvement. Oh, it was an improvement there for finalized. It's going to put him. Uh, I'm not sure where, but uh, Dino improves there, puts himself in second. He still keeps him in fifth place, uh, ninth place there. Bombardier, a 44.483, not an improvement. He actually missed it by a thousandth of a second there. Uh, who else we got here? Peme, we got Dino's done. Lucas is coming out. Yanis is on a flying lap here. He is not going to find an improvement there. Uh, who else have we got here? Got Ram Apex GT out on his final flyer here as well. And I don't think that that is an improvement either. It doesn't look like he was too satisfied with his qualifying session here today. But uh, you know what? That's all right, my man. Don't panic. Top 10 points is uh, no matter what here today, no matter where these drivers finish. So, A, there's always that. That's good points. And uh, racing conditions are different than qualifying conditions. But our fastest qualifier here looking like it's going to be Dino. Stealing fastest lap from Payme. 
Wow, identical times, actually. Ain't that something? Uh, interesting. So the game has slotted uh, Dino as our pole sitter, even though Pei Mei has the same time, and Pei Mei actually got it first. You would think that uh, Pei Mei would be sitting on pole position, but the game has decided that Dino is going to be sitting on pole position. And... Uh, Interesting. That's interesting. We'll have to wait to see how race control sorts this one out. In my opinion, I think Pei Mei should probably be slotted in P1 because he did get the time before Dino. Um, crazy that we have seen a tie for pole position here in qualifying. Uh, I can't say. I cannot say I've actually ever seen that. That's pretty impressive. That is pretty impressive. Gotta say. Well, well, uh, I think it literally just placed Dino in front because he is our lab and Peime is SV. R comes before S, to be honest. I don't think there's a fourth number there. I think it's literally based on alphabetical order or the amount of DR that the two drivers have. It's one of those two factors, I think, has placed Dino up ahead of Peime. But uh, it's all up for speculation. I mean, none of us really know how the game determines who's going to be where. That is insane. I know, right? Like, this is serious. No, I, I mean, it is what it is. I don't think the race control is changing it here. I think this is going to go... Um, yeah, obviously this is not something that any league uh, official has factored in <laughs> to... Uh, to their uh, to their league considerations, a tie in qualifying for fastest lap. Uh, I mean, the odds of that have got to be huge. <laughs> the odds have got to be huge on that. Yeah, I think it's. I think so too, Jakey. I think so too. That is definitely a first chap right here at Pure Racing League. Identical qualifying fastest lap times. Um, GG's. <laughs> Absolutely crazy stuff right there. Well, I mean, in that sense, I kind of think you need to give them both the, the pole position point, right? I mean, I think that's, that's a simple solution there. Um, but, yeah. Wow. What, what a... What a what an odd thing to have to deal with. Uh, crazy. Two, 144.058 laps. Uh, absolutely insane. <laughs> uh, this should be, uh, it, uh, I'm sure that'll be a, a topic of discussion post race this week. Uh, uh like I said, it's not something I've ever considered uh, when when organizing leagues and getting ready to host a league event. Uh, I've never considered there being a tie in qualifying for fastest lap. So that's interesting. Uh, yeah. Well, whatever whatever it is, the game has Dino slotted in his first place. So I mean, it is for it is for it is what it is. <laughs> That's insane though. I've never seen that ever. Ever. I have to do a little bit of research on that, and see if we can figure out how the game determines that. I'm curious now. I'm most certainly curious. Pretty crazy here on Easter weekend, let me tell you what. Did not say, did not expect to see that today. That is for sure.
All right, let's flip over to the other screen here until these guys sort this out. Once we get the race underway, we'll flip it back. <laughs> that was uh, that was pretty crazy. That was pretty crazy right there. I gotta say. There you go. See. Got some got some funny talk coming in now. It's uh, it's it's a tough position. See, there we go. Problem solved. I think race control has uh, has has settled that. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get to it, shall we? Division two is officially underway. Here we have sorted out the pole position. So we are just going to say Dino and Peme starting in pole position here today with identical lap times. So they're going to line up side by side on the grid in pole position. Dino does have the inside line into turn one, so he does have that advantage. Let's see how this shakes out. Kick them tires, light them fires. Oh, we so going racing, chat. And boy, if uh, qualifying is any, any indication of how this race is going to go today, I think we're in for a absolute doozy. What did you miss? Tying fastest laps in qualifying, Nick. Peme and Dino with identical qualifying times. Crazy. All right, Dino gets the whole shot here. Round turn one, and Peme slotted right in behind him there in second place. We got Lucas right there in third, Bombardier into fourth place, Yanis right there beside him. Those two battling it out for fourth and fifth here right now, going through the International Horseshoe for the first time here, 25 times around this racetrack. Should be about an hour-long race, give or take. All right, Bombardier settles into, the, into fourth place there in behind Lucas 36, but he is going to go defensive here with Yanis Racing, still putting the pressure on him here in behind. Yanis Racing really looking to try and move up quickly here, I think, as uh, him and Bombardier locked into this battle very early on, and that's kind of bottling up the pack in behind him here right now. You can see all those guys kind of two by two in behind here. Uh, as these two are battling it out for fourth and fifth place here right now, there's nowhere for the rest of the field to go in behind them here right now, except just wait to see what happens here. So they've all kind of sorted each other out. I suspect we're going to see a lot of nose to tail driving in this division today. And I think that the drivers are more than aware of how powerful the slipstream really, really is. One make Lexus race, you know it, Nick. This is season two from Pure Racing League. It has been the Lexus all season long. So that beautiful 2017 Lexus RCF GT3 car. The drivers have to use a racing hard, soft, and medium tires here in the race. I believe it's six times tire and three times fuel consumption for the series. And it's a 25 lap race. All right, Peme here in second place. Now, uh, that was the craziest thing we've ever seen in qualifying. I, I, unbelievable. Uh, you know, never ceases to amaze me the things that we see for the first time ever in this game. So there we go. Early pit stops coming in from the front runners. Yana stays out. Uh, Bombardier stays out. Going to be first and second place for them. So Shredda's going to take third place. And finalize going to move himself up into fourth place. And that whole front group has absolutely dove into pit lane. Dino, Peme, Lucas, the Stig. Uh, Mr. SBS and Ram Apex GT. So basically, the bottom half of the field, or the top half at race start, has already jumped into pit lane. So two varying strategies, it looks like, here in the field. 25 laps, you know it, Nick. And this is uh, Division 2. We did Division 3 just a little, just before this one. And after this race is done, don't run away, my man, because we have Division 1. And Division 1, well... Y'all have to wait and find out. I mean, it is our GTWS drivers over there in Division 1 and all their respective competitions. So uh, we are in for a treat here on Easter Sunday this week from Pure Racing League. I tell you what. All right, so Bombardier and Yanis. So a little flash of the headlights there from Bombardier. Now, that could be a sign to say, hey, let's work together here. We're opening a gap on Shreda in behind. Let's get moving. Or, hey, I'm still here. You haven't lost me. I'm going to make a move coming in. Okay, nope, that was a flash to say, hey, you know what? Let's work together here. Let us open this gap up on Shreda. Finalized still right there in fourth place. And, I mean, the front four all within striking distance of each other. So now we've got this crazy pit stop strategy from the whole starting front group here. They've all made their pit stops. They've all come back out. All of them are still fairly close together here. And nothing has really changed too much except that Peme is kind of in the lead of this pack here. But it's side by side with him and Dino as they come in through the Le Mans chicane there. And Lucas has settled right in behind here too. And, I mean... That is nose to tail through the Le Mans chicane right there, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely great stuff by these guys. And, wow, just goes to show the, 
the experience level uh, and confidence level compared to, to our Div 3 drivers going through that chicane like that. I mean, those guys, they, they, they sent it. They absolutely sent it. All right, we're going to stick with this here as Lucas is trying now to find his way ahead of Dino there. So he has gotten around Dino. He's slotted in between himself and Peime here. And I mean, this is nose to tail here. We got Stig right in behind Dino. Mr. SBS is right in behind the Stig. And then Ram Apex GT is right in behind Mr. SBS. Now, Mr. SBS is a Norwegian uh, champion. And I believe he is a very young guy as well. He's still just a teenager, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm, I, I, I can't quite fully remember the details but Mr. SBS is uh, a Norwegian Masters Series champion I believe uh, over there in the esports racket that's going on uh, for the uh, sim racing over there where these guys hail from so very very accomplished driver at a very young age is Mr. SBS so never count this guy out either um, a racing lab esports is what our lab stands for as well just in case we're wondering and a very competitive group of racers. We got Sir Shredded Knight here in third place, coming from, I believe it's the Knights of the Round Table, they call themselves. I could be wrong there. Uh, we've got Finalized here in fourth place. We got Pay Me from Street Version right here in fifth place. He's got Lucas369, independent driver here. This driver is an independent driver, he doesn't drive for any team. He, uh, we've got, uh, and then the R Lab group here, Dino, Stig, and Mr. SBS. Uh, we're missing one of our R Lab drivers here this weekend. Uh, I believe it's Halix that we're missing this weekend. And, um, Obviously, Easter weekend, some of the drivers opted to spend time with the families over Easter weekend. And of course, of course, you would expect nothing less. Mr. SPS here in ninth and around Apex GT, he's right there in 10th. I mean, he's just chilling with these guys right now. He's in a good spot. He just, he didn't show quite the pace that these guys had in qualifying. So just sitting in the slipstream there right now, kind of watching these guys' lines through the track is probably a great thing for him here right now. And uh, it could really pay big, big dividends for him here in the race today. I think he's in that front group. So he's in a good spot compared to what's happening up front here. We got two different strategies. We got four drivers on a different strategy than the other six drivers in the group. So we've already seen an early pit stop from our front leader, uh, from our leading pack that has broken basically the race up into two groups of racers here now. And at the end of the race, I should cluster everybody back up again, ideally, if everything goes as the plan for each driver. Bombardier here in second place. He's got uh, basically a Lexus uh, separating himself and Yanis racing right now. We got Sir Shredda here in third place. And Bombardier and Yanis have done a good job to open a gap up to second and, or sorry, to third and fourth fourth place uh so shred and finalized here now almost three seconds is that gap so pay me leading that that second pack here and lucas right there in behind and, and those two were working pretty well together in qualifying and we're seeing much of the same thing here in racing conditions you can see a very gentle push there not an aggressive push so both cars still stay in that slip this is a proper bump draft right here basically you just want to have the cars connected at the hip so to speak and just continue to be pushing each other around the racetrack and that's about what we're seeing here just gentle little push here backing off just enough into the corner so both drivers can make the corner there and you can see that it is starting to work here uh over dino in seventh place right now you can see they are starting to kind of pull away a little bit there from the uh from the R Lab driver, so he needs Mr. SBS and the Stig to close up here so these three can link up and start to push those two up in front here. We're gonna see the slipstream is very important at Daytona during endurance racing conditions. That's it, that's all there is to it. And these guys are showing us why. Division 3 was a much more kind of all-man-for-himself style race. Division 2 is a much more methodical race. These guys are aware of uh, slipstream power and bump drafting power, and they're gonna utilize that as much as they can during this race today i guarantee you that but it is yanis racing still with the race lead here we have uh bombardier still right there just a uh, lexus basically separating the two guys together here and i think that's by design uh we've got sir shredda here in third place finalized the same thing just right there as a three quarters of a second in behind just chilling right now got Peme and lucas here in uh fifth and sixth place right now and the gap to finalize is 15 seconds so let's keep an eye on that here too uh, what the gap between the two packs are because it's about a 26 second stop with fuel So it's probably about a 20 second stop without fuel for tires here. I'm guessing uh, So right now they're within that gap to go back ahead of that pack when they decide to make their pit stops And a little bit of separation here now in the back part of this back group here as well as the driver's paces are just kind of starting to separate these drivers just a tiny little bit 
But Yanis Racing and Bombardier here in first and second place. They are doing everything right here right now. They've broken free from the pack. I don't think uh, they may not have even expected that early dash into the pits from almost half the field, from over half the field here. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see now how this strategy works out. These two really are trying to set themselves up to be in the best position they can be for the end of the race by working together by these two not fighting for first and second place right now they are gaining time on track this is smart racing by Yanis and Bombardier right now so Shredda and finalized here in third and fourth place and as much as the same thing these two aren't battling they're just staying close together and just trying to maximize their time around the racetrack without costing each other any time Peme, Lucas, Stig, Dino, Mr. SPS, all right here, and uh, Ram Apex GT here too as well in the back of this pack. They are starting to close back up here again a little bit, so it's give a little take a little here right now. Dino is not letting Peme and Lucas go anywhere. He is all over these guys right now. Mr. SPS in 8th, Stig now in ninth, and Apex GT just in behind here in 10th place, just on the back of this group, so... Got lots going on here right now uh, in Division 2, and there's a lot of strategic driving happening here right now in Division 2. Let's go find some standings here in Division 2, and let's break down where we're sitting here in the championship right now. So, in the championship lead right now is Sir Shredder Knight currently running in third place here on track with 73 points. Yeah, this racing is second place just in behind him right there with 70 points. So only three points separating the two right now. Yanis Racing, if the race were to finish right now as it stands, Yanis Racing would potentially tied for that championship points lead or a point ahead. We've got the Stig sitting in a third place at 58 points. We've got Mr. SBS right there also sitting in third place with 58 points. And in fifth place there is Bombard or sorry, Lucas at 369, 56 points. Bombardier just nipping in behind him with 53 points. So there is a lot on the line for a lot of these drivers here in this race today to set up our finale in two weeks' time from now. Every driver needing every position they can get on the racetrack here right now. And only three points separating that championship points lead from Yanis, uh, from Sir Shredda to Yanis Racing as well. And these guys, have, they've been working together quite a bit throughout the season here as well in these races, Yanis Racing and Sir Shredda, and it has paid dividends in the standings for these guys. They are teammates as well, I, be I do believe. So Bombardier is doing a great job of keeping pace, keeping touch with Yanis here. Again, they're doing a great job at not fighting each other here. This is a racer's decision being made by Bombardier right now. I mean, he has had good pace all day long. I'm sure if he wanted to put the pressure on Yanis, he probably could. But smart racing brings home championships. And Bombardier is also right there in the top five fighting for points. He does need to beat Yanis Racing, obviously, but right now... The race isn't here. The race is at the end when the checkered flag is waving. Right now, it's setting up for that final charge to the checkered flag right now. And that's what's happening here from Bombardier. He's trying to just play nice, save some fuel, maybe have a little bit of advantage going into pit lane over Yanis Racing, and that could make the difference potentially at the end of the day for them. But they do need to worry about that backpack as well still. So Shredda here in third place and finalized. It's just tucked right in there from Flying Fox Racing, just chilling right now, doing much of the same thing. I think that Bombardier is doing behind Yanis Racing, saving a little fuel, giving a little push there, a little help to Shredda. Smart racing being had from our Division 2 group here today. Peme and Lucas here in 5th and 6th place, same thing, just pushing, playing nice. The gap was 15 seconds, the gap is still almost 15 seconds, so not really gaining anything, but that's because the guys up front aren't battling each other either. They're just playing nice like everybody else in the field is. And we did say this is the type of race we're going to see here on our Division 2 today. All right, so it's Dino here in seventh. And he's not letting these guys go anywhere. He's like, uh-uh, where do you boys think you're going? I am here. I'm involved. We got Mr. SBS and the Stig. They're only a couple seconds in behind. Clearly, they have the pace to get up to these guys. It's just going to be uh, where and when and uh, how are they going to do it here. And then we've got Mr. Apex GT just a little bit off. Just a little bit off here. He's five seconds. He made a mistake somewhere. The poor guy, unfortunately, and lost that toe. But still there. He's still moving and grooving. 
All right, so again, a lot more calculated of a race here from our Division 2 drivers. We're not seeing the chaotic battling like we've seen in Division 3 for half the race. And then everybody settles down and realizes, hey, we got to work together. No, no, these guys realize that right off the bat. So uh, much different style of racing coming from our Division 2 group. And right now, fastest lap on tracks of 45.499. That's only two one hundredths of a second off the fastest lap in Division no, two tenths. Sorry, that's right. Uh, Dennis coming in, dropping that down to a 45.1 um, in Division Three. So already on the medium tires, these guys are pushing the limits of that fast lap of 45.499 here. And uh, I can imagine what those times are going to be on the soft tires when these guys finally do decide to hit the soft tires. So a half second track limit penalty there for Yanis, and that's unfortunate. That's going to allow Bombardier to grab a quick little gap up in front here. And boy, that half second really cost him there. Uh, almost a full second there on Bombardier. So Bombardier is going to move up into the race lead there. And I mean, just doing just doing what you should do in this situation. The driver ahead picked up a penalty. You got to go. You can't wait. You just got to go. So now he's got a small little cap. That could be beneficial for Shredda and uh, finalized here. That Those two are separated by just a little bit. If they can get tucked in here and get a little bit of uh, work done on this lap, they may be able to close that gap up a little bit on those two up in front. Peme and Lucas here, uh, they are now starting to close that gap. It was 15 seconds. It was 14.7 last time around when we checked this. Now down to 12.9 and closing. So these guys are starting to close in on that front pack a little bit. Got Dino here in seventh place. He's lost just a little bit of touch with those two. He's just on the edge of the slipstream there as he comes around the West Horseshoe here. He's just uh, beyond that second mark here right now. Uh, Mr. SBS closing in on his teammate here, though. That could be beneficial. And Stig right there is still tucked in behind Mr. SBS as well. So those two can get uh, get hooked up and just get a little bit of a push-up over the next couple of laps. That should allow them to link up with Dino there. And then the three of these guys could probably... Uh, do some damage on that front pack there uh, and, and start closing in on Payman and Lucas there as well. So Ram here, unfortunately, he's just out of that toe. He picked up a half second penalty there. And uh, keep going, dude. Don't don't let it get to you, my man. You just keep pushing, brother. All right, so it was almost a second when Yanis had to serve that penalty coming in to about this point last time around. Yanis closed back up to half a second, so he's done a good job to close the gap back up to Mabardier. And let's see if they continue to work together here as they come into turn one. Yanis really closes up on Mabardier there into turn one and basically closes that up to a, a card like gap between the two of them here again. And Bombardier is going to take a semi-defensive line there. As we head around the International Horseshoe, Yanis is going to settle in behind there. He got a bit of a run there on Bombardier, but I think that was just to keep clean air in his race car, and then he just settled right back in behind once uh, Bombardier had cleared there. So uh, I think he just got a good run through the corner there, and he just had to uh, didn't want to give up the momentum. So he just chose a, a line with clean air in it and no car in front of him, and then uh, the two settled each other out. So again, kind of back to nose to tail here in the lead. Uh, finalized past Sir Shredda here, so I'm not sure what happened. Sir Shredda may be having a moment uh, on the track here because that gap is fairly significant. So finalized now finds himself in third place there. Shredda down into fourth place and by himself and uh, drivers pushing here uh, in behind him to try and close up the gap now down to 7.7 .7 seconds. So that was a big gain right there for whatever happened to Sir Shredda on the racetrack there. We just missed it. Got Dino here in seventh place, and he's starting to lose touch with Payme and Lucas here. So this might be by design at this point. He may be just checking up a little bit here and a little bit there to allow Mr. SBS and the Stig to close back up so these three can get linked up and then they can get pushing up the track here. That might be by design there. Um, and not a bad call. I'll give up a tenth here and a tenth there to ultimately gain uh, it, uh, multiple tenths up the racetrack. Uh, it seems like a pretty good trade-off there. If they can pull it off, that is, so. Lots of difficulties here. And, I mean, the sim racing, at the end of the day, is becoming a team sport here. So we are starting to see a lot more um, team driving strategies in, in competitive racing. And there is nothing wrong with that. That is a great thing. It's a great thing for the sport. It's a great thing for the communities. It's a great thing for the drivers. Um, and the trick is, is figuring out how to do that team driving 
as a team, as a group of individuals that are a part of the same team. It requires similar pace levels, requires understanding of each driver's driving style, it requires the understanding of the car and the track combinations. There is a lot involved with team driving in competitive racing, but the teams that can really make it work and pull it off absolutely do some good work. Uh, during races like this and, and we're seeing great teamwork being had and, and the funny thing is this is teamwork from competitors from from essentially drivers chasing each other in the championship standings and at the end of the day when you're down to the final lap to go and say you've got three teammates all in first second and third place so they're battling that out to see who's going to get the checkered flag at the end of the day the whole point is to put your team in the best position for the best spots on the racetrack and battle it out at the end and I, and we see a lot of that here um, as sim racing continues to grow and develop here in a more organized sense with league racing uh, you know great example of peer racing league and other great organizations across the sim racing network not just gran turismo uh, but all the great sim platforms so it is becoming a big team thing you know it's becoming a very popular thing and, and you know you hear me say it a lot lately that, that the lines are blurring between the sim and and the real motorsports world and, and it's, it's true we're seeing a lot more real racers enter into the sim racing world getting more involved with the teams and the aspects of this league racing we're also seeing um, real life racers using sim racing to stay sharp in the off season as well to stay in shape to just stay in the rhythm to keep the motions going in the bodies keep the muscle memory so you know the lines i say it a lot now and it's the truth because the lines between sim racing and, and real motorsports are continuously blurring the more and more that the two continuously gel with each other i mean you have sim racing fans flooding to race tracks all over the world now to watch their favorite racers in in in, in f1 nascar uh, uh sprint cup racing miatas lamborghinis porsche cups gt racing multi-class racing i mean in, in all aspects of motorsports you know the sim racing community is is really starting to show up in droves at these racetracks to support their favorite teams and, and it's quite crazy to see to see and and then you have the real racing community coming in and, and actively being a part of the sim racing community in those off seasons hanging out with the sim racing community hanging out with their fans and 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 racing with their fans you know it's 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 it really is an incredible thing that we're seeing starting to develop in the sim racing world here as especially the last couple of years have gone on. I mean, the pandemic kind of really stepped everything into movement, but, uh, you know, it, it's been strong since. And and uh, it, it, the motorsports world is a great real-life community. I've been very fortunate to be a part of several different motorsports uh, types of racing throughout my lifetime uh, as crew members, not as a driver, unfortunately, but definitely as a crew member. I've been behind the scenes a lot in different types of racing and um you know it's a family it, it's tight-knit in real motorsports your competitors on the racetrack but behind the scenes you know you've got a car that's broken you're not going to get that car on track because you're missing a part and somebody else has that part they're going to give you that part to get your car on track and that's the type of thing i'm talking about and we see it in sim racing and we see it in real life racing on a constant so we do have a couple of the drivers in that front pack making a pit stop here we got yanis and sir shredda coming in the pit lane here now making their first pit stops of the race and that strategy now um, starting to come into effect here for that front pack. So Bombardier and Finalize have opted to stay out another lap. That puts Peme and Lucas in third and fourth place. Uh, Mr. SBS now up into fifth place with the Stig in sixth and Dino down into seventh place here. So you know, the team drivers just been swapping those positions around as they go through the racetrack here. That's pretty normal. Got Yanis Racing coming out just in behind there in eighth place with Sir Shredder right there in ninth, almost eight seconds in behind. And then Ram Apex right here in 10th place has not made his pit stop yet. He made one early with that first group though. All right, so Bombardier is just about seven seconds clear of finalized right now from first to second place. But again, both these two at some point will be making a pit stop here soon. Uh, Peme and Lucas here, who've been very gingerly working together here uh, basically all race long, including qualifying here, doing a pretty good job right now. They've opened up that gap to the R-Lab team there by four seconds. But Bombardier leading right now and just not a whole lot of crazy happening right now and that's all right that's normal all right there we go our leader now coming into pit lane so bombardier has come into pit lane we got finalized also coming into pit lane so let's see 
how much longer these guys are going to opt to stay out here that made that early pit stop so we've got two different strategies at play here all right the r lab drivers have jumped into pit lane here they're going to jump off those medium tires they're going to come on to those racing soft tires that's the last compound owed by this group of drivers uh, they started on the hards, bounced off them right away, went to the mediums, they'll finish on the softs. We'll see the same thing from Peme and Lucas here as well. Uh, the other drivers on the other hand though, Yanis, Sushreta, Bombardier, and Finalize are on an alternative strategy. They started on the mediums, they're going to jump into that middle hard tire with one lap stint, make that early pit stop, bounce off that hard tire, jump back onto that racing soft tire, and we should have a fairly close race here once the pit strategies kind of play back into effect here. These guys should be fairly close together again. Aaron coming in with that thumbs up. Appreciate you, my dude. All right, so currently Paymate back in the lead of the race here. He's got Lucas in second place. We got uh, Bombardier here in third place. We've got Finalized in fourth. We got Mr. SPS in fifth. We got the Stig in sixth. We got Dino in seventh. We got uh, Apex in eighth. We got Yanis in ninth and Sushreta in tenth. We should see another set of pit stops coming from the R Lab drivers, I think. Late. It'll be late in the race. Okay. So they're done. They they they've made their final stops. So really it comes down to when Pamey and Lucas now up in this front gray group are gonna to decide to stop for their soft tire run at this point. And then we'll have to see where it all settles down here. So Bombardier and Finalize still owe a pit stop each yet. And everybody else is cleared from them down. So Ram Apex has not actually made a pit stop yet. He still owes one as well. So we got five drivers that still owe one stop here. And it's going to be interesting to see how that works out. We're looking at the gap here. It's a great shot from our camera crew right there to give us an idea on the gap between first, second, and third place here right now. Obviously, that gap's not big enough for them to hold over Bombardier. I think it's about 20 seconds for a tire change, if I'm not mistaken here, uh, today. So if they're not taking fuel, it's about a 20 second, 25 second pit stop. If they're taking fuel, it's well, 25 plus, uh, depending on how many liters of fuel they're taking. It's a default refueling speed here at three liters per second. So every second is three liters of fuel going into the tank. Uh, again, depends if they need to take fuel. All right, so this is kind of what I'm, I'm, I'm paying attention to here. Uh, Mr. SBS is taking Dino. The R Lab team here is 22.3 seconds in behind Peme. And I believe it's just 20 seconds for a tire stop. So this is going to be very close where the R Lab drivers and Peme and Lucas and Bombardier end up after their final pit stop here. So it would be very interesting to see how the, all of this plays out. All right, so Lucas and Peme now come into pit lane. What is Bombardier going to do? He's going to stay out. These guys, have uh, they're clear. I mean, they are just racing here. So we are going to stay on board with Mr. SBS here. And we are going to see where these guys come out in comparison to Lucas and Peme. Fastest lap now belonging to Mr. SBS, 45 flat. I suspect we'll see that come down yet. And there we go. You can see the R Lab drivers, Yanis, uh, Apex GT, all jumping ahead here. No. Uh, Payman and Lucas come out just ahead of Yanis Racing and Ram Apex GT there in fifth and sixth place. So, all right, the R Lab drivers. Strategy getting them out in front of Payman and Lucas here, but boy, not by much. 1.6 seconds is that gap. Yanis Racing is right there as well. So is Ram GT. Uh, finalizing Sir Shredder here in 9th and 10th place. They've, again, cleared their stops. So this driver here, I think, is the last driver to owe a pit stop here at this point. Uh, what about Mr. GT? He owes one as well still.
All right, so Bombardier has got an 11 second lead over uh, the R-Lab drivers. I don't suspect that, that lead is going to grow any. If anything, that lead is going to continue to shrink. So I think that the longer he continues to sit on these hard tires, the more he's hurting himself at this point now. I think he just needs to make that pit stop, get it over with, get on track, and start making up time. Uh, the R-Lab drivers here now in second, third, and fourth place here. They're all linked up nose to tail essentially here. It's going to be some tough work for Peme and Lucas in behind who have been working together as well. So it's two versus three in a sense there. It's going to be interesting to see if they can start to split through those drivers or not, if they can even catch them. So it is a Bombardier now coming into pit lane. That's going to give Mr. SPS the race lead here as he comes around in through turn one. Again, it's about 20 seconds, I think, for a tire stop here. And that was definitely not what the gap was from Bombardier to the R-Lab drivers. That gap was only 12 seconds. So he should probably come out just in behind. Uh, potentially Yanis Racing here, I think. And that is correct. So Yanis Racing is going to move up into 6th. That puts Bombardier down into 7th place. But he is going to have a little bit of a tire advantage moving towards the end of the race over the remainder of the field. He's been on these tires a little bit longer. So... That's where it's going to be interesting to see how these strategies play out. We have drivers that have been on the soft tires a little bit longer than those four drivers that have opted to do an alternative strategy. So, here we go. Woo, a little bit of a mistake made right there by Dino as he came in a little hot to trot there. Did not want to pile into the back of his teammate there. And that is going to cost him time on Peme and Lucas right there. That is not what he wanted to do right there. Yanis Racing is right there too. Yeah, Bombardier is right there, only three and a half seconds. I think we're in for a good race finish here. These guys are all within striking distance of each other there. We got finalized in eighth. So Shred is in behind 1.6 seconds. GT finally making his pit stop here. And 15 seconds behind the pack here. Uh, you're doing a great job. You really hung in there really well at the beginning of the race here today. All right, so Mr. SBS is our race leader. These guys are clear. They don't need to stop again. The Stig is in behind. We got Dino in third. We got Peme and Lucas chasing in fourth and fifth place. Now, Dino and Peme tied for the fastest qualifying lap with a 144.058. No joke. Never seen that done before in a live competition qualifying before. So uh, the game had decided that Dino had pole position over Peme. Whatever factors the game does, we don't know. But uh, both those drivers tying for the pole position. So both those drivers will be awarded a pole position point here today, which is pretty crazy to think of, uh, for exactly the same qualifying time. That's pretty crazy. But this is turning into be a great battle right here, right now, up in the front five uh, cars here. Right now, Mr. SBS is in a good spot. He's got a little bit of breathing room. He's got two, two teammates in behind to try and slow those other two guys up a little bit. Mr. SBS is trying to drive away from this pack right now. Well, we're definitely keeping an eye on this battle. This is going to be a cooker of a battle here throughout the remainder of this race, I think. Yeah, this is right there. Uh, Bombardier is not too far in behind. We got a little bit of separation there. 1.2 seconds right now for a race leader. He's got the gap. He's got the toe broken. He's got a few laps to go yet, though. Got Stig here in second place. You got Dino right there in third place. And the gap between Dino and Peme is three tenths of a second. So We'll put one and a half Lexus in between the two guys right now. As we head into the Le Mans chicane, all five of these guys roaring through the Le Mans chicane there. Lucas coming out of Le Mans chicane quite sideways there and somehow managed to be still tucked right in behind Peme on the exit there. That was pretty impressive. And Peme has got a charge here. Peme is running up on the back side of Dino here. He's going to move up to the outside. And Lucas is going to give him the push through here. And this is what you need to pass on the outside around Daytona here in this situation with these one make races. These cars are just too equal. Uh, so you need that. You need to push through there. And that actually was not enough there for these guys to get the job done. Lucas had an opportunity to give him another bump there. But coming so close into the turn, didn't want to affect the braking zone of Peme there. So he just backed out. And these guys will uh, attempt to try and find their way around here. There we go, Pammy taking a look up the International Horseshoe. He's trying to get the job done on Dino here on exit. He gets the job done. Pammy moving up into third place here. So Pammy is starting to try and split these guys up here a little bit in front of him as he slots himself in between Dino and the Stig for that final podium position here. But we do have a response coming back from Dino and absolutely defended right there by Pammy. He's seen it coming and he moved it over, cut that line off. 
and defended that position. So here we go. It's a great battle. We're going to be sticking with this here for a minute, I think, as these guys are really starting to uh, try to find their way through each other here. So Peme got a little bit of a break free right there. Lucas now battling with Dino in the background. That's going to get Dino off of Peme here. So Peme can now focus on the stick. Lucas is going to get around Dino here. And Dino finds himself dropped down two spots in the fifth place here with plenty of laps to go yet. Lots of racing left here up in this front pack right now. All right, let's get back. Let's see what's happening. And this racing's just off in the background, just watching this go down in the distance, going, yep, keep doing it, boys. Keep doing it. I'm only three seconds behind. I'm coming. Bombardier right here, 2.8 seconds in behind. We got finalized. We got Sushreda and Ram GT here, Apex GT there in 10th place. So it is Mr. SBS right now, and he is trying to absolutely lose uh, that pack right now because Peime is trying to make his way through here. He's on the outside now of the stick and Pamey went really high into the banking he used the banking to try and get a little bit of extra pull in the slipstream coming down on the stick there to try and make the move happen he just didn't quite work in his favor but boy he is tucked right up in behind and putting on some pressure here right now for second place stick doing a great job at answering the call here and boy, this is a battle here right now for the podium positions here in Division 2 as this race is winding down. We're on six laps remaining with the lap we're on. And it is getting spicy up front. We got Lucas in fourth. We got Dino still right there in fifth. Oh, there he is. Yanis Racing is coming. So is Bombardier. This could be a seven-way showdown potentially here before this race is over today. Uh, for those top three spots, this is shaking up to be a doozy here. We got Mr. SBS. He is losing that toe gap. He is now under a second to these two here. Peme got the inside track on the stake. Peme has now found himself up into second place and trying now to fight off the stake here so he can start his attack on Mr. SBS. He still needs to clear our third place driver here. He's still in this active battle for second and third place right now. He, and the stake is doing a great job of trying to fight back here. He gets a great run out of the Le Mans chicane there and Peme is going to have to keep her tight down at the bottom of the track there to make sure that the Stig does not get that inside track on the banking here. He has to make sure that if the Stig is going to try to go around, he forces him up to the high side of the banking where it is very difficult to make the pass. And that is exactly what Peme is doing. We got a penalty there, it looked like, from the Stig. And Lucas is going to jump up into third place now due to that penalty. So an easy pass there for Lucas. And that gives Peme a little bit of cushion here now in between Mr. SBS and the Stig. Now he can really start to focus his attack on first place, knowing that Lucas has been working with him all race long. But at some point, these two will start to probably fight this thing out here as well. So we got the Stig in fourth. We got Dino in fifth. We got Yanis right there in sixth. And Pabardier right there. They have closed up finalizes so shredder closing up on each other here as well in eighth and ninth place and Ram Apex GT doing his thing there in tenth place so it's Mr. SBS here currently and uh, that gap is gone he now has a mirror full of second and third place right now and second place is tucked almost right underneath his rear wing here at the moment as we head down in through the 90 leading into NASCAR one and two and it is on here between these three right now. Peme again just taking a little bit of a high line into the banking, using the banking to come back down and try to gain a couple miles an hour to try and use that slipstream to his advantage there. And Mr. SBS is doing a very good job here at holding down the fort right now. The stake in fourth place, Dino in fifth. He's got Yanis all up in his business here now as well. A car linked in behind Bombardier is right there nipping at the heels here too. We got finalized in eighth, so Shredda in ninth, and Mr. GT in tenth place. There we go. The move been made, and of course we missed it, so we're going to go back and watch it. Just got into the slipstream here around the banking, coming in through NASCAR 3 and 4, heading to the tri-oval, moves it out on the outside. Little slingshot help, a little push there from Lucas. Job done. 
heading into turn one. It looked like a mistake was made there by Peme slightly wide into turn one there, but he's still holding down for his place. We got Lucas now sitting in second. We got Mr. SBS in third. We got the stick in fourth. We got Dino in fifth. Yanis in sixth. Top six drivers all separated basically by a car length right now. And then we got Bombardier closing in on that pack here as well in seventh place. So um, definitely you're seeing some battles here at the end of this race for these top six, seven positions uh, as we wind down the clock here. Lap 22 of 25, Peme and Lucas have managed to fight their way around the R-Lab drivers, but expect the R-Lab drivers to potentially be responding back here as well. So we still got plenty of time left here in this race to see some amazing action happen here on the racetrack. Again, Lucas sitting there in fifth place right now in the standings overall. Really needs this good points result here today. So I do suspect at some point we are going to see him fight Peimei for the race win here today. It's just a matter of when at this point are we going to see that battle go down. I'm assuming it's going to be a last lap fight. Probably coming down through the banking. If I had to guess. And they do need to definitely need to be aware that Mr. SPS, he's still right there. He has not let these boys go anywhere. Yanis now finds himself up into fourth place. So Yanis has gotten himself involved here. He's now moved up into fourth place, five seconds off the podium. Dino sitting in fifth place here. Uh, Bombardier has moved himself up into sixth place to stick down into seventh here. We got finalized up into eighth place and only 10 seconds in behind that pack now. So some some uh going on's happening there in the mid back it's a position swap in here as we're watching this front battle right now and the front battle is a little more controlled at the moment Oh, there it is. I thought a little mistake made there by Peme. Lucas tried to take a run up the inside there, but Peme got a good run out of the corner there. Lucas not able to take advantage. He's going to find himself tucking right back in behind here. Mr. SBS is just out of the slipstream here at the moment. He's working real hard just to stay in the toe of those guys so he can be there when he needs to be. We got Yanis in fourth place. We got Dino in fifth. Bombardier in sixth. We got Stig in seventh. We got finalized in eighth. So Shredda here in ninth. And Mr. GT here in the tenth place. control making sure we're on the same page as we near the end of the race here all right so Pamey and Lucas have broken slightly away from Mr. SBS here in the third place but Pamey is also broken slightly away from Lucas Yanis is trying to break away from Dino, but Dino's not uh, letting them get away that easily here, so he is still all over. We've got a couple PlayStation signs out on the racetrack there. We've got the Stig in sixth place. We've got finalized in seventh with Sashreda and Bombardier. Not sure what happened to Bombardier here, uh, but finds himself now down into ninth place here, so interesting. There must have been some goings ons in that mid pack that we missed. All right, Payman and Lucas here, first and second place. I'm trying to keep my eye on those two because I do know that eventually a battle is going to start to develop there between those two. I'm just not sure when. Got Yanis and Dino here in fourth and fifth place right now. We've got Stig in sixth. We've got Final Heist in seventh. We got Sushreda in eighth. We got uh, Bombardier in ninth. And we got Mr. GT, Apex GT there in tenth position. And all ten drivers still on track here, so... We are seeing all our drivers start to finish here, and that is what we love to see the most, that every driver gets a good full race in, and you can still see these two are working together here. So, uh, again, this is going to be a last lap showdown, I think, between these two.
All right, Yanis Racing and Dino here are very tight together here now, nose to tail. Dino's done a great job to close it up here. This is the final lap here now, ladies and gentlemen. So next time that these guys come to the checkered flag or to the start finish line is going to be the checkered flag waving. Uh, all drivers are still on the late lap here as well. So here we go, down to the final corners of our racing track here. We're just heading out through the West Horseshoe right now with our race leaders. And they are getting ready to head out through this left-hander leading into the banking. NASCAR 1 and 2. And just a handful of corners remain here for this racing group today. Payman in the lead. Got a good exit there. And he's... He, Lucas also got a good exit there. And he's going to get the run. So here we go. We are sticking with this. We got to stick with this. We got battles all up and down this racetrack right now too. Got the Lamar chicane coming. You can see uh, Yanis and Dino there in fourth and fifth place are nose to tail too as they were heading out into the banking and behind there. Got lots happening on the racetrack here right now. We've got uh, Bombardier and I believe Shredder battling there in eighth and ninth place as well. So here we go, heading to the try oval. We're side by side. He's going to get her done. Lucas 36 is going to steal the win away from Peme there. Peme goes low, but Lucas gets the run on the outside. He's going to take that win away at the start finish line. Photo finish there belonging to Lucas. Mr. SBS is going to get third place there. We got Yanis taking four. Dino in fifth. Stake in sixth. Sir Shredda and finalized here in seventh and eighth place here. Nose to tail. Not going to see the run there. He gave it a whirl there. Just a little bit too late there from finalized to pull out and try and get the job done. But great job by those two. Bombardier uh, potentially fuel saving here. I think he's fuel saving here. He is on a sliver of fuel as he comes around this uh, the start finish line here. And uh, yeah, on that fuel map six, I would imagine by now they're getting bring it home in ninth place. Definitely not ideal for him here today. And Mr. Ram Apex DT is going to bring it home here as our last driver in 10th place here today. And great job here by our Division 2 group. And a photo finish down at the start finish line. And Lucas is going to steal it away from Peme right at the end. Whew. That was a great finish right there, ladies and gentlemen, wasn't it? Uh, absolutely. I did say they would fight that out at the end, and they most certainly did. So, uh, GG's to these guys so there it is lucas 36 with the official race win and fastest lap on track pay me in second mr sps in third yanis racing in fourth dino in fifth the stake in sixth the shredda in seventh we got finalized in eighth we got bombardier in ninth place and ram apex gt rounded out our division two field here today whoo that's some good racing chat what do you guys and gals think i thought that was a spectacular race it was a very controlled race here today and a great job there by our group. So let's look over to this screen here just for a moment's time. We'll allow our drivers to jump into the interview room here. So who do we got? Whew. That's some, uh, that's some close racing right there from uh, the boys here at Pure Racing League. I tell you what, that was a crazy race finish uh, from Peme and Lucas36 there. Absolutely great stuff. Mr. SBS with a very close finisher as well. He hung in the best he could there, but those boys had a plan, and it was very hard to tackle the teamwork of Peme and Lucas36 there today as well. It proved with the top two finishes there today from those two. That first stint train was sweet. It was. It was. <laughs> Alright, we do have Peme up in our interview booth here. So let's flip over to this guy right here. Let's go have a little chitty chat with Mr. Peme. All right, so we have our second place finisher right at the line here today. Photo finish here between him and Lucas369, and uh, absolutely, absolutely well-executed race by these two. They worked together in qualifying to push the top end of the qualifying field, 
and that didn't change when it came down to race time. Lucas 369 and Peme, who did very, very well using the slipstream and the bump drafting technique to push the field here today. And at the end of the day, it puts them both on the top of the podium with a photo finish at the end of the 25 laps here today. Lucas 369 just edging you out there at the end, but absolutely amazing drive here today. Talk us through your race and finish it off with some shout outs uh, for the viewers watching at home, my man. Yeah, no, thanks for uh, thanks for having me, man. Uh, always a pleasure doing these and watching back as well. Uh, yeah, pretty pretty straightforward race. Um, as many times as I've been beaten at Daytona, um, I just knew that drafting would be would be key. You know, it's a it's just a huge game changer, uh, especially on a track that is part oval. Um, but yeah, me and Lucas worked together pretty well. Uh, made pretty, pretty good progress through the pack, and just kept it, um, you know, as clean, clean as we could. Uh, wasn't really looking for a, you know, like a, a teammate. But when it comes down to Daytona and just past history of, of losing to, uh, to bump drafters, and you know, you got to do something about it. Either beat, if you can't beat them, join them, you know. But uh, yeah, shout out to Lucas and. Uh, uh, third place as well for a good race absolutely and i mean the r lab guys mr sbs dino and and the stig there you know much of the same strategy as you see yourself and lucas uh, just weren't quite able to uh, make it as efficient as, as you two were able to, but uh, great battling out there today. And I mean, uh, qualifying, uh, I mean, a tied qualifying time with Dino at the end. And, they, and then, of course, a little bit of discussion on how that got grid should have been placed. But, uh, you know, I don't think I've ever seen that in my whole career. Uh, two drivers qualifying with identical times for the pole position. But uh, a pretty crazy race here today. And it didn't really seem to matter as you still were fighting in there at the top at the end of the day. But uh, really great racing. And, and, I mean, finale is, is, is two weeks' time. So, I guess, what's the game plan for our final round here in two weeks? Uh, I mean, you know, just just practice up. And, uh, I mean, I'm really kind of grinding out right now for uh, manufacturers and the actual GT World Series uh, season. But this, uh, every time I get to race one of these races with this kind of competition, I take it just as seriously as that. And I think it's just as just as competitive and um, maybe not, maybe not as on the high end of the competitiveness, but you still get good, uh, good reps out of it. And it's, uh, stuff you can't get every day. So, uh, I definitely take advantage of it when I can and, uh, looking forward, looking forward to the last race for sure. That and masters, uh, it's been a fun season for PRL. Thanks for the Robbie cantilever, you, uh, GT 45 for y'all putting this on, man. And, uh, looking forward to it absolutely and 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 great racing out there today uh you know everybody was on that same mindset here in this division today which we expected to see but uh you come out there on the second step of the podium today and some great points leading into our finale in two weeks time so we'll see you next week at masters all right thanks for having me and uh shout out to lucas for that win as well he's He's lucky I didn't take the grass there. <laughs> Absolutely. And that was a great charge at the end there as well. Uh, but great job here by our whole driving field. Payme in second place here today at Daytona at round five, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations for a great run from him. Uh, who else? I think we have Mr. Lucas here as well. We do have Lucas369 in the room here as well. So we'll have a chat with him as well. And, you know, much of the same thing is, as I said to Payme, you know, you guys had a plan coming into the race. You worked together in qualifying that you got you guys on the top end of the qualifying grid for your starting positions. And then nothing changed come race time. You had the same strategy and uh, caught me all. I think I caught a lot of people off guard. Top six of you guys all diving into pit lane at the end of lap one there to uh, get off that tire and, and continue on with your race stint. But all in all, when everything was said and done, uh, the teamwork there and, and the efficiency between you and Paymay's the slipstreaming driving really gave you a shot at the end. And we did know that it was going to come down to that last lap battle. You got a great run coming out of the Le Mans chicane and uh, side by side to the start finish line for a photo finish. And you edged him out by a boat, a front fender there. So congrats. Congratulations on a great race. Really needed that today for that points gain. Uh, I guess talk us through how your race was today and what's the goal moving into finale weekend. Uh, thanks first and foremost. Uh, appreciate everything you guys do, but no, uh, this race was it went very according to plan. How we had practiced and just game plan beforehand, and 
Uh, it's big key in my driving is I will always try to work with somebody before fighting them. And it's bump drafting is my thing. And Daytona, uh, like Peyton said, there's history with the track. And like a lot of us, we went to the 24 hour and such. And I mean, Daytona, you got to bump draft. That's what you got to do. But you got to know how to do it right. And you got to communicate with each other. You got to mm, just manage and dictate the pace with each other and i mean we were cutting time through everyone uh the r lab boys didn't make it easy that's for sure uh, uh three of them were they were on the same strategy for the most part but it didn't look like they were linked up near as much as uh me and peyton were and i mean it's just smooth race lots of adrenaline and then yeah the last last couple laps seeing the gap that we had behind and it was time for us to battle it out a bit a couple side by side moments and then Got the run only just to the line. And, yeah, thankfully Peyton didn't go to the grass as per his usual. Absolutely. And, I mean, uh, that was just that was just great racing from Division 2. We, we figured we'd see a pretty calculated race out of this group, but that's exactly what we've seen. And uh, at the end of the day, you come out on top. So big points gain leading into finale. So I guess what is the goal now leading into round six and two weekends time from now? I see still believe I'm an outside chance, but this win and the fastest lap point help. Uh, it, I believe I'll probably be third, possibly fourth. Uh, standings are very close. I mean, everyone's been on top of their game all season. Some people have had some bad races here and there. That's nature of the beast. Uh, but it's been close, fierce competition. Uh, somebody said it before. This is a top split division for like a nation's race in a Div 2 season. And it's kind of funny. It just shows the pace of PRL this season. There's so many good top talented drivers throughout the field and we wouldn't be able to have races like this without them. So got to thank the drivers as well for being here and racing with us and giving us good competition. Absolutely. And great racing. It most certainly has been all season long here from the GT3 series. And I guess anything you want to add to your day today and any shout outs to the fans out there? I just got to thank you first and foremost, PRL. All the boys, Peyton, Jake, everyone uh, from the Rejects group, uh, everyone here at the house, Easter dinner, all the family watching and such. Uh, good day. Can't wait to watch the next race. Absolutely. And we got the, the, the cream of the crop coming up next, ladies and gentlemen. So now would be a good time to go refresh those beverages, get those snacks all plenished up because Division One is coming next. We appreciate it. Great racing from you. Great strategy here today and rewarded with a very needed race win here for trying to charge up into that podium at the end of the season here from Lucas369. We'll let you get back to that clubhouse. Go celebrate with the group and congratulations on a well-deserved win here today. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Peyton. Thanks, everyone. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so there we have it. Lucas369, our Division Two race winner. And, I mean, what else can we say? These guys are not taking any prisoners today, are they? All right, so that sets us up for Division One, ladies and gentlemen. This is, well, Division One. That means these are our fastest drivers this season in Pure Racing League. And you're in for a treat. Oh, we have a uh, driver with a car malfunction here. Uh, right as we're getting ready to start qualifying here in Division 1. And, oh my, that really is unfortunate there. And it might actually be to the point where that driver may not be able to make the grid here now today. And that is unfortunate. You hate to see that, ladies and gentlemen. So we do have... Uh, nine of our 15 drivers competing here in our top division today. Again, it is Easter Sunday, so some drivers have opted to go spend that time with their family this weekend, and of course, rightfully so, and some drivers are available to be here to race this weekend. So to each their own on this beautiful Easter weekend, happy Easter to everybody. So we do have some of our big names here up in the track here today, and I think it's going to be an interesting race. So as I was just tuning in, this is Pure Racing League GT3 Season 2. We are racing the 2017 Lexus RCF GT3 Edition race car. And we are at Daytona Road Course here for a 25-lap race today. The racing hard, medium, and soft tires are all required to be used today. It's six times tire and three times fuel, I believe, here. Four-hour settings, 
for this week's race. This is round five of six, setting up a finale in two weeks' time. Right, so we're just waiting on word from the driver that's stricken here at the moment to see what exactly it is that we're going to have go down here. He may have to exit the field, unfortunately, and that would, uh, that's unfortunate that is the case. And that does look to be the case here. It looks like we're going to see uh, one of our Division One drivers down and out here in round five due to early mechanical failure. Didn't quite get it out on the racetrack here today and something going on with that racing car here. So they're going to pull it back into the paddock here and you're going to see if they can get that sorted out. But uh, you always hate to see a mechanical failure right before racing time. And I mean, that's motorsports. It happens, ladies and gentlemen. So one driver down. We still got plenty of drivers left in the grid here, though. And it's not going to take away from the fact that we're going to see much of the same race, I think, that we've seen from Division 2, except we're going to see it at a slightly quicker pace uh, here from Division 1. Again, these are a combination of the World Tour drivers. We have uh, our current 2024 reigning manufacturers champion in the grid here today. And uh, a lot of big names from North America here in the grid. We got Prima Quartz. We got Robbie Heck up in the house here as well. We got Racing Green and Cayman 74, which are guys that are constantly there right there competing uh, in those in those World Tour events, trying to get to the uh, to the live stage. We got Mr. Out there as well. Uh, we've got ERA's Jakey up in the grid here today as well. Uh, Fast and Loud is up in the grid here today as well. Another very quick driver. I think it's his first race of the season here, filling in today. So it should be interesting to see what these drivers are going to have in store for us here. I believe our your best track too. Oh, I hate to hear that, Wurtsy. Oh, brother, that is painful, my dude. So we are ready whenever Robbie is ready. I'm, sure, I'm pretty sure he's watching, but I'll just let him know. Just so he knows. I hate to see it, Wurtsy. I hate to see it. Hopefully you get that fixed soon, my dude. All right. Won't be able to raise too long of a fix to make everyone wait. Yeah, I, I get it, bud. I get it. All right, so the word from race control is, we are starting soon. Hmm, we are missing a couple of the drivers fighting up in the top of the championship here this weekend as well, I see. Alright, I believe we are now under qualifying conditions here, so we'll get some stuff up on the screen and then we'll flip the screen over for everybody. Alright. Button right there. Do a little, quick little change right there. All right, let's get out on track here. So first out, no, not first out on track. It is not the Maddie first out on track. That is lies. That's Robbie out front here. There we go. All right, now it's Jakey out front. <laughs> Appreciate that sub on the YouTube channel. All right, so it's E.R. Jakey, I guess, out in front here first, now at Daytona. Pre 
appreciate the sub there on the YouTube channel, FXP. Appreciate you, my dude. All right, so we got a whole lot of cars all in a very small space here right now as we're nearing the Le Mans chicane on the end of this outlap here. This is only a five-minute qualifier for Division 1 as well, ladies and gentlemen. We're not going to get the typical 10-minute qualifier that we've seen in Division 3 and 2. Division 1 only gets five. So basically a one-shot one shot, uh, attempt at qualifying, depending on when you came out of the grid. They'll probably get two here, but it's designed basically to be a one-shot qualifying run here for our Division 1 drivers. So at a minute, 44, 43 probably for these guys around the track. Um, you should be maybe able to see two hot laps out of this group, but they need to sort each other out here first. <laughs> All right, so now we're qualifying as we come into turn one here. This is official qualifying now, and you can see everybody's nose to tail here. It's like the F1 Monza to who will get the draft facts. Ain't that the truth, Steve? Ain't that the truth? All right, so we do have our manufacturer world champion here leading things off here in the first hot lap of qualifying. Like I said, I figured these guys would get about two laps here just because of how quick they are in the five minute qualifying session here so uh little mistakes are definitely going to cost these drivers in their qualifying time here they definitely need to be on point you do not want to give an advantage to the next competitor ahead of you or behind you in this case qualifying to gain a position on the starting grid when you're in a lobby that is this fast these guys are at the top of the game they push the limits of what these cars and track combinations really can do a lot of the times there is not a lot of room for error these guys are super consistent they don't make big mistakes typically and they are very efficient around the racetracks so for every driver in this division every little mistake is crucial you're okay mr sbs it is okay great race brother great racing out there nice job for third place dude you don't, you don't have to make it. You don't have to be there. It's not mandatory, my man. You're okay. It's just something to uh, fill the fill the fill the gap in between the races and and give the give our our top three drivers an opportunity just to talk to the fans. But it's not something that has to be there. So you are okay, my dude. We appreciate you. Great racing out there. All right, so here we go. The times are coming in. We're just going to let them all come through, and then we're just going to see where everybody's sitting because that's probably the easiest way to do it here. So it's Robbie Heck in pole position with a 43.8. Quartz is right there with a 43.8. One-tenth of a second in behind. Medi is right there with a 43 point, uh, 44 flat, pardon me. Uh, literally less than a tenth of a second in behind Quartz. Jakey is right there with a 44.3. We've got Cayman right there in fifth place with a 44.3 as well. Got Racing Green with a 44.7. Mr. Elf with a 44.999. And Fast and Loud there with a 49.3. So uh, very, very close times here right now. <laughs> Turn it up. Is it too loud? Is it not loud enough? <laughs> All right, so it is Robbie Heck here leading the charge. You can see, I think he made a mistake there on that lap. <laughs> He's just bailing out of there. Uh, we got Quartz coming around here. He's in second place right now on the grid. You got Medi just in front of him. So let's sit on board with Medi here as he's gonna come across the line just before uh, Quartz there. And, and Robbie obviously made a mistake on his lap, so you can see he just bailed out of that. He's just letting everybody go through here. He knows he doesn't have time for another lap, so he's just gonna squash it, call it a day, and where they put him is where he ends up. So see if Medi can steal pole position away from Robbie and see if Quartz can do much of the same thing here. Gonna be good enough for second place. He's gonna take second over Quartz. Quartz doesn't find an improvement there. We got Jakey coming through here next. And he's dropped a couple spots as Cayman comes through in fourth. Mr. Elf coming through there in fifth place. Fast and Loud also grabs a spot there in seventh place. So that was a quick qualifying with only eight guys on the track there. But it's gonna be Robbie Heck with a 43.846. It's gonna be Medi with a 43.911. Got Quartz right there with a 43.953. Then we've got Cayman with a 44.093. A 44.2 for Mr. Alf. 44.27 for Jakey. 44.4 for Fallis and Loud. And Racing Green with a 44.7. So uh, less than a second separating the eight drivers on the racetrack here today. 
in qualifying. So we didn't have a tie in qualifying, thankfully, here this time around. Uh, uh, again, I doubt we'll see that again anytime in the near future, like we did in Division 2. Um, that's the first time in probably 400 plus broadcasts that I've done I've ever seen that in qualifying. So I would assume it's going to be at least another 400 plus broadcasts before we see it again. It, it is bump drafting is super strong on this track, absolutely. I was getting myself, I would be too, my man. Well, that's 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 the fun part, Mr. SBS. That's the fun part. We like to come and talk to the drivers, too. We like to get to know the drivers. But, hey, you know what? Don't feel bad if you don't make it. It's okay. It's not a mandatory thing. Like I said, it's just if uh, drivers want to come and talk. And food? I'd be getting food on Easter, too, over talking on an interview, man. And, like, no, 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 I don't blame you. Food sounds good right about now. Good race, absolutely. You like the GTA 5 freight train can't be stopped? <laughs> It was nine. We had one driver have to unfortunately retire uh, before qualifying started due to mechanical issues. So that's unfortunate. Poor Wordsy. The right food, man. I mean, come on, right? Guy just finished a hour long endurance race at a top level. Uh, I'd be thinking food too, man. I'd be hungry. <laughs> 100%. All right, we're just going to flip it back over here for a minute. Just got the track officials out. Again, they're just doing the, the racetrack check, and that paid dividends a couple of weeks ago. They found an issue uh, with a spot on the racetrack where they couldn't allow the race just to race for our Division One race two weeks ago, so it actually got cancelled that race so uh, it was just a drop round for division one in round number four so the standings are a little bit different in stand in division one but it is still very close there as well and we'll talk about that uh right now actually well we have a moment to talk about it because i think the race is starting here in just a few seconds time so Right now it is Medi in the championship points lead with 68 points over second place Robbie Heck who has 58 points. So 10 points separating first and second there right now. Callan Roach sitting in third place with 51 points not in the field today so that's not ideal. Uh, we got Jeffries there in a fourth place with 45 and we got Donovan Parker right there with 44 points there as well and also not in the grid here today so we got a couple of drivers not in today and that's going to be good for the guys trying to gain points on those drivers for their overall podium here leading in the finale two weeks from now kick them tires light them fires we're going div one racing chat and we are green 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 and we are now moving so again happy easter to everybody and easter weekend is why we're seeing some smaller grids here today obviously some motorsports drivers have opted to spend the day with their families as opposed to the racing here today and understandably so thank you for the rest of the drivers that have come on to put on a show for the amazing racing fans out there worldwide so it is robbie heck managing to hold first place down after we get through turns one two and three here on race start heading into the international horseshoe the first time it is robbie heck in the lead with many very close behind in second place Prima course right there in third. Came in and Mr. Alf battling it out for fourth and fifth place here right now. Mr. Alf looks like he's got fourth place locked in. He's going to settle up right in front of Cayman. That position will switch for the time being. We've got ERA's Jakey here in sixth place whenever the sixth place button will work. There we go. And he has the racing green and fast and loud in behind it. Ooh, a little bit of contact there between fast and loud and uh, racing green there. And those guys will get back on track and get moving here again. And I don't see any damage, I don't think, on racing green here. That was just an unfortunate incident there between the two. And that's going to set him back a little bit on the pace of the pack here. But that's all right. Lots of racing left. 25 laps worth, as a matter of fact, here. Let go. All right, so it is Robbie Heck here, and he is in the race lead. He's got a couple Lexus links right now on uh, uh, Medi. That's the word I was looking for there. I seen a comment come up. I got distracted. Uh, Prima Court here in third place. We got Mr. Elf in fourth place. We got Cayman here in fifth place. We got Jakey in sixth. And then, of course, we have Racing Green and Fast and Loud here in seventh and eighth place. They're not really that far off. Only six seconds back. A uh, little bit of contact there in the one corner. And uh, it was purely accidental contact there, obviously. And uh, these guys are just moving through here in seventh and eighth. So they can hook up together here. They still got a chance to catch back up to the 
pack because this pack is still trying to sort it, see each other out here. We got Medi now taking over the race lead from Robbie Heck here. And Robbie Heck is under fire from Prima Cores here as well. So uh, it's Medi now in the race lead. Ports now moves up into second place. Robbie Heck finds himself now in third place here after corner one on lap number two. And it is on between these five drivers here right now. Mr. Alpha fourth place came in here in fifth place. Got Jakey here coming in. He's getting those tires. We got Racing Green coming in. We got Fast and Loud coming in. So we do have uh, three of our drivers in on that early pit strategy like we see in Division 2 here. So it's going to be interesting to see how that works out for these guys. <laughs> yeah. Oopsies. Fail. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it is Medi very quickly trying to open the gap up here. He's almost uh, broke the toe there as he came out into NASCAR 1 and 2. But the course got a pretty good run there, and he's managing just to hold on to the tail end of that slipstream right now. Much of the same from Rob in behind Quartz here. He's just tucked into the edge of that slipstream right now, and he's got Mr. Elf in behind, though. He's getting a little assistance here from our fourth-place driver, so that should help close up the gap to Quartz, which should in turn help start to close the gap back up to Medi here. So... Uh, Slipstream is OP at Daytona here. We see it in Division 2, and we're not going to see a whole lot of different here, I think, from Division number 1. It's just a matter of these guys catching back up to each other so they can work together. Uh, Jakey here now in 6th place. He's all on his own in clean air. He's got Racing Green and Fast and Loud just in behind here. So, three drivers on the early pit stop strategy, and we got uh, the rest of the field on a slightly different strategy in behind. P coming in with that like on the stream. We've got Jamie coming in with the like on the stream. We've got Derek coming in. It's just popping back up apparently, but hey, nonetheless. All right. Just going to check with the metro check, make sure everything's still moving properly, everything's looking great, everything's still sounding right, everything looks like it's moving properly still. Fantastic. All right, so it is Medi in the lead here. We've got Robbie Heck now in pit lane. We've got Quartz in second. We've got Mr. Alf in third. We've got Cayman in fourth. We've got Robbie making a pit stop, coming out in fifth, just ahead of Jakey here. Uh, we got Racing Green in seventh, the fast and loud, just in behind there in eighth place as well. They're connected together there. So uh, a little bit of a rough start there for those two, but now they seem to have settled in. Those hard tires are really tough to drive in this Lexus as well, especially on such a flat race course as Daytona is. Now, you're all laughing saying flat. Look at the banking. Well, the banking is the only elevation change on this racetrack there is no elevation change anywhere else around this track except for in the banking and that elevation change in the banking is 20 feet from the top of the banking to the bottom of the banking basically so the remainder of this racetrack is relatively flat and level which is why drivers have a hard time in corners like the international horseshoe and the west horseshoe getting a good hook around the corner because there's not a whole lot of undulation in the corner it's just a flat wide corner the only time you have any undulation is in nascar one and two and three and four and a trioval here on the racetrack with the infield sector involved here and that is uh the elevation change here in daytona is solely in the banking so Medi coming through on lap number four, still in the race lead. We got Port still chasing in second place. We got Mr. Elf there in third. He's got Kirk, uh, KRK's Cayman, pardon me, uh, in fourth place, just in behind them here as well. We got Robbie and Jakey here in fifth and sixth place. So they've uh, uh, are linked together, doing some work on the racetrack here and trying to close up that gap to fourth place driver came in here now these guys have to pit still right so 20 seconds is that gap because from fifth place down these guys have all made their first pit stop here racing green fast and loud jake and robbie hex so uh the bottom half of the field on a different strategy than the top half of the field here it looks like when it comes down to tires and we should see all that come together again at the end of the race like we did in division two it should be make for an interesting race finish here again Granted, there's only eight of us on track here in the division today. Granted, it is Easter weekend, and that is why driver numbers may be a little bit uh, off here today. But happy Easter to everybody. Hope you're having great eats. Hope that you're enjoying your family time together. And hope we're enjoying the racing today, because, well, that's why we're here. To entertain everybody at home. All right, so Medi doing Medi things, leading the charge, controlling the pace. Almost got the toe, broke the quartz here in second place. Now quartz doing a great job of trying to stay on the toe of Medi. We got Mr. Elf here in third place and came in. These two are very close together here. If they can start working together, that may help push up into that battle for the top podium spots here. 
and they're close enough to get it, it's not quite in pushing distance yet. We got Robbie and Jakey here in 56th place, and these two are straight up just pushing each other up and down the racetrack here right now, trying to close the gap. It's at 20 seconds, so they are slowly but surely closing the gap up on fourth place here right now and racing green and fast and loud doing much of the same thing here in seventh and eighth place as well and just a little bit more off the pack there right now but the racing is racing and anything can happen we know that for a fact got messages coming in from all different angles right now it is really managing here today uh, but it is many here in the lead we've got ports in second place we've got mr elf here in third place we've got came in here in fourth position as well we've got robbie heck here in fifth with jakey in tow again these two are just pushing right now up the racetrack closing up that gap on the front group those guys still owe a pit stop compared to these guys who've made an early pit stop as well so that will change up the positioning here a little bit should close them back up together a little bit here as well but that means the front group will be on some fresher soft tires and the back group will be on a few laps older tires when all that transitioning comes to play at the end of the race so we've only seen one driver attempt to finish on the hard tires this weekend and uh, still finding a podium position on that strategy as well so uh, we haven't seen too many other drivers attempt that here so far at Daytona uh, we've typically seen that that hard tire be used right off the bat and ditched early or right in the middle stint and again ditched very early so uh, only a couple of drivers trying that what we like to call the Hamilton strategy finishing on the racing hard tires All right, so it is Medi still leading the way here, but the gap is, uh, I was going to say it's closing, but it's not. As it comes out of the International Horseshoe, the gap's still the exact same. Uh, Quartz has about 1.6 seconds built up over Alf and Cayman right now. So first and second place have a little bit of a cushion. If you want to call that a cushion, at the level that these guys drive at, that's, that's a cushion. <laughs> Uh, that's as much of a cushion as you usually typically get when you have guys at this level. Uh, we got Rob and Jakey here in, again, 5th and 6th place. The gap is 19 seconds, 19.8 uh, seconds. So they're not really dipping into that time much, but they are slowly but surely ticking away a little bit. Racing Green, 7.5 seconds in behind. Fast and Loud in 8th place, just 1.8 seconds in behind as well. So welcome into him. Love seeing uh, new faces on track as well. All right, but it is Medi here. He's moving, he's screaming. He is rocking and rolling. Uh, we've got Riva Quartz here in second place. We've got Mr. Elf here in third place. We've got Cayman here in fourth place. We've got Robbie in fifth. We've got Jake in sixth. We've got Racing Green in seventh. We've got Fast and Loud in eighth place here. So we had nine to start, but one driver having a mechanical uh, issue right before qualifying started there. And unfortunately for them had to put the car in the paddock so down to eight here today all right so as we come through turn number one here uh, the gap is about three quarters of a second. So Quartz is doing a good job again at pacing the leader right now, Medi in front. We've got Mr. Elf here, 2.2 seconds in behind with Cayman still right there, just a Lexus separating those two, and that's about where it's been all race long. That's probably by design. Got Robbie Heck here in fifth place with Jakey right in behind in sixth, and they are closing in slowly but surely, but. Uh, maybe not as quickly as they would probably be hoping to be closing in right now, but the, the, again, those drivers still owe a pit stop up there, so it's uh, some interesting race strategies we got seen on the racetrack here. 
basically what's going to happen is we're going to see the front four come in. We'll most likely probably jump on a hard racing tire. We'll probably see them ditch that tire uh, a lap later. And then we're going to have the whole field basically back together for the final um, nine or ten laps most likely is I think what we should probably end up seeing here. That's kind of the way it seems to be shaping up so far in the race today. But that's just speculation. Just a guess. But it is Mehdi leading the charge here. He's, yeah, again, he can't shake Quartz. Quartz has not let him get away. Uh, this is the first time we've actually seen the gap legitimately over a second here. So, And it is barely hanging on over a second there as Quartz starts to dip away into it here a little bit coming around the bank. And Mr. Elfin came and still only separated by three tenths a second here. That has been pretty much uh, constant all start of this race here so far. We got Rob here 19 seconds in behind now with Jakey in tow as well. So they are starting to slowly but surely dip away there. That was a half second this time around uh, from fifth place to fourth place gain. So as, as those tires start to scrub in and get into that optimal running range, it seems like those guys are really starting to pick up the pace back there. And we got fast and loud here up in eighth place. This is quite an interesting livery design on Medi's car here this season. Uh, we've seen it on, on ERM Joseph's car as well, obviously teammates. Uh, interesting liveries, interesting liveries. So that gap now from 4th to 5th place down to under, just under 19 seconds. We're kind of keeping an eye on that as, as the race progresses here. There's just not a lot happening right now. Again, this is strategic driving. Uh, much like Division 2, we're going to see uh, not a whole lot of battling for position uh, unless the driver makes a mistake. Then we might see another driver take advantage of that mistake and try to grab position. But other than that, this is literally drivers trying to a, break the toe or stay in the toe of the next driver up in front. So, Medi's all alone here right now on his own in the race lead. He's in first place here. Uh, we got Prima Quartz here in second position. Doing a fantastic job here so far. And really working hard at trying to close that gap back up. But Medi just continuously just little bits too. Not very large chunks. You know, a half a tenth here, a half a tenth there. But uh, that, that's gotten them a couple of times now into that uh, 1.1 second range and, and just pulling quartz out of the slipstream. Um, Mr. Alf here is in third place and he's still got game and just tucked right in and underneath him here in fourth place as well. So again, strategic driving by these two. Probably more than well aware of what's going on in behind him here obviously as well too. I mean, that timing is starting to come down from Robbie Heck and Jake in fifth and sixth place here as they're trying to chase that group down as well. Got racing green seven fast and loud and eight. So what I suspect that we're gonna see is we're gonna see first through fourth pit. We'll probably see um, fifth through eighth go around maybe two or three more times, and then we'll probably see them pit, and then we'll see first through fourth pit another lap immediately after I would assume. I'm just assuming it's an educated guess. Uh, and then they'll be cleared of their tires and it'll just basically be a big eight-way showdown for the podium at the end, ideally, if it all goes well. Quartz is doing a great job at hanging in there. He's really trying hard there. He's just slightly losing pace there right now with Matty. Uh, Mr. Elf here in third place. We got came in there in fourth place. And they're still moving and grooving and chilling as well. Got Robbie. He's almost got the gap down to under 18 seconds here at this point. He has lost Jakey here. Jakey has lost that toe. So Jakey's just slightly losing touch with Robbie here a little bit. Uh, we got Racing Green here in seventh place. We got Fast and Loud just in behind there in eighth. So it's going to be interesting to see how these two different strategies play out at the end of this race. A little bit of lag coming from Quartz there, it looks like, in the background there. A little bit of side-to-side -side action from that car, so... Um, doesn't look like anything too unbearable, though, however. 
Uh, we got Mr. Elf there in third place. We've got Cayman in there in fourth place as well. And Quartz typically lags a little bit side to side uh, in these lobbies, I've noticed. Rob here in fifth place, 18 seconds to gap to fourth. Jakey's three seconds in behind. He's got Racing Green 6.8 in behind him and Fast and Loud just a second in behind him as well right now. It's a little quiet race here today to get one from these guys. And Medi is now kind of about a tenth a lap here right now over Quartz. So um, yeah, Medi now kind of stepping it up a level a little bit here, trying to start to open that gap up, give himself a little bit of breathing room, allow for a little air if need be. Although we don't see him make too many of those, uh, they definitely do happen. So you can see uh, Cayman and Mr. Elf are still working together here. They really are trying to push that gap back closed up to Quartz in second place here, and it is working. It is coming down there. So, you know they're slowly but surely dipping away at that time right now. Got Rob here in fifth place as well, and he is slowly but surely eating away at that gap. Jakey here in sixth place. We got Racing Green here in seventh, and we got Fast and Loud in eighth place. I love that name, Fast and Loud. That's a great name. All right, so it is again. Medi leading the charge here. Uh, that hasn't necessarily been the case all season long. You would think so, obviously being a reigning champion right now. But uh, him and Robbie Heck have been kind of tossing that back and forth between the two of them all season long. Not only in the GT3 competition, but also in the, in the Masters series as well. So the two of them are deadlocked in a pretty good competition throughout both championships right now here for Pure Racing League. But uh, separated by 10 points here currently in the GT3 series uh, right now as well. In a, uh, I think a positional penalty was handed down to Rob after round two, I think it was, uh, for a incident uh, at Tokyo. So I think that may have cost him a couple of points there, but uh, still at the end of the day, it would still be a solid eight-point lead for Medi if that it was the case and that, that penalty wasn't handed down. So. Uh, 10 points is with two races to go. It, it's, a, it's a tough game right there. He definitely needs to race win here today. And, and Mr. Elf and, and Cayman working just fantastically together here right now in, in third and fourth place. Uh, having a hard time still closing that gap up though, however, the first and second place. So the, just the, the individual pace of Quartz and Medi is, goes to show um, how quick those two are moving around the track here today in comparison with these two guys who are working together fairly efficiently here it seems like on the racetrack as well. Got Rob here in, in fifth place. He's holding his own pretty good here. We've got Jakey in sixth position as well. We've got Racing Green in seventh place. We've got Fast and Loud. Fat and Loud. That's not Fast and Loud. That's Fat and Loud. <laughs> even better. I like that even better. Sometimes my brain just 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 says what it wants to see and not what it's actually seen. Now that, that happens sometimes. Half second track limit penalty for Medi, and that is good for Quartz. That should allow Quartz to grab uh, three quarters of a second at least on our race leader here. So let's see here. It's 2.13 as we come across. And he's going to actually come into pit lane, so uh, hard to say what, what that penalty actually did. We'll have to wait to see when the two come out of pit lane to see how far apart they are and see if we can get an idea that way. All right, so drivers of pit. We're 12 laps in. The bigger question is now is when is this second pack of cars of pit on the first lap going to come in to make their final pit stop now? 
I suspect it's going to be somewhere around that lap 15 mark. It depends probably on how these guys are on their soft tires uh, around the track based off practice sessions. And, and I'm assuming that that's probably going to determine when they're going to come into pit lane here. So uh, Robbie comes out right in behind Medi and Quartz. The gap is about 1.7 seconds. So about three quarters of a second that Quartz did gain on Medi with that penalty there. That puts Cayman in 6th and 7th is Racing Green and Fat Loud in 8th. So Jakey up into 5th place there. But I don't think Jakey made a pit stop. He did not. So we have a pit stop in hand for all 8 of our drivers now. And it comes down to that final pit sequence now. So let's see what the drivers have in store for us here in the last half of this race. I was correct. We do see the racing hard tires on those drivers that just made that stop. And I suspect we're probably going to see uh, a one and done on that hard tire. So Medi does come out in the race lead still. So I guess this is interesting. It does um, Rob come in with these guys to take his final tire as well? I guess this is the big question here. What is up his strategy sleeve right now? Jakey in 5th place came in in 6th. We got Mr. Elf in 4th place there right up ahead. So a nice little 3-car train right there as well. But Jakey is eventually going to have to make a pit stop here as well with these guys. So I guess the biggest question is when are we going to see these pit stops happen? Alright, we got Quartz and Medi going around. Rob has decided to come in. Jakey's come in. Mr. Elf has come in and Cayman has come in. So two of the higher tire runners have opted to come in. We got Racing Green and looks like Fat and Loud is also coming in. So Medi and Quartz going out for a second hard tire lap. Everybody else coming in to take those soft tires. So we're going to have six drivers on the soft tires one lap earlier than Medi and Prima Quartz. Let's see how it shakes up now when these guys make their pit stop. seconds the gap between first and second. Robbie's 23 seconds in behind Medi and Prima Quartz. A little bit further behind than he was before he pit there. Cayman is 4.7 seconds in behind Rob. Mr. Elf is right there in fifth. Jake is right there three seconds in behind. Racing Green and Fat and Loud still very close together in seventh and eighth place about six seconds in behind. So not a lot has changed as far as gaps goes. And again just goes to show it how hard it is to gain on your opponents in this division once you lose that time. So, I mean, Medi's in control of this race right now. He's got 2.3 second gap over Quartz. Quartz has uh, just given up a little bit of time here around the racetrack and a very young driver, this driver is as well. So, the, you know, just becoming eligible to be uh, at the live events himself, actually. So now in the thick of the competition here as well as courts. So we got lots of lots of new faces coming up in the GTWS here in, in this season and probably in, in next future seasons as we're gonna see some of our some of our favorites probably maybe starting to uh, retire, not run. We're gonna start seeing a lot of new faces coming from uh, the Grand Turismo Elite drivers and Green uh, Courts, Callan Roach, you know, a few of those names that we're definitely gonna be seeing a lot in those GTSWS events. And uh, that's just a couple of names. Uh, there are so many of them out there. So many great drivers out there uh, right across the whole platform. So here we go. Robbie went in uh, a lap earlier, and he is going to now take over the race lead over Medi here with one lap older soft tires. Medi's going to come out 1.8 seconds in behind Rob. None of these drivers need to make another pit. Cayman's now in third place with Mr. Alf tucked in behind fourth place. Quartz finds himself actually sitting in fifth place with Jakey chasing in sixth. That leaves Green and Fat and Loud in seventh and eighth place here respectively just in behind the pack. Eddie is still fastest on track here right now. Those medium tire times that we're seeing right 
now there as well. Not that these guys are now all in the saw, so I suspect uh, with lower fuel weight, we're going to see those times come down fairly quickly. You see Robbie's almost three quarters of a second up on that 45.3 right now as he's coming into the launch chicane here on the NASCAR 1 and 2. Heading into NASCAR 3 and 4 here. And there's a lot of accolades on a lot of the drivers in the series here. We're going to bring uh, a lot of that information, everybody, in the finale here in two weeks' time. So I've we talked about some of the drivers' accolades at the beginning of the season here. Uh, hopefully we see some stacked, stacked, stacked grids for our finale here this uh, this upcoming in two weeks' time here from PRL. 44.8 there from Robbie Heck as he comes around there. And that's going to be the current fastest lap on the track for the time being. Came and it's going to come around and actually take that from him with a 44.379. So... Uh, the battle of fastest lap is most certainly on here. We got Mr. Alf in fourth place. We got Forge right there in fifth. We've got Jakey in sixth. We got Fat and Loud battling it out. Racing Green here side by side action coming into turn one. And there we go. We finally got ourselves a little Rochambeau going on here. And Racing Green, for the time being, getting a hold to position from Fat and Loud. So there we go. Great little push right there. All right, so it is Robbie Heck, 1.2 seconds up the road from Medi. Medi is moving. It was 1.8, so he's already closed up a little bit of time here on Rob Came. It is 3.2 seconds in behind third place. He's got Mr. Elf, 6 tenths of a second in behind him. Quartz is 1.2 seconds in behind them. And Jakey's 3.2 seconds in behind those guys. So lots happening on the racetrack here. We still got Racing Green and Fat Loud here in 7th and 8th place. Uh, Duke it out back there as well. Only six seconds off the pack. So I had that little early early race contact, and that is basically what's put them in uh, that six-second gap from the back of the pack. And they basically managed that gap since uh, the incident on the first lap. So they're definitely on pace with the field, just unable to gain any of that time back, unfortunately, uh, from the field here. That may be a penalty right there for Medi in behind Rob Heck as he came through the bus stop there. Uh, we'll go and check on that in just a second here as soon as I hit the right button. And he did not actually get a penalty there. Interesting. Ooh, that was a penalty there for Cayman, and that's going to be third place for Mr. Elf here. And there's still lots of time left yet in this race. Prima Quartz here, one second closing in quickly. Jakey is striding to close in there as well. Uh, but this right here, this is this is game on right here. We got Medi, we've got Robbie, we got a separation of less than four tenths of a second at this point. Both drivers are on the same tire. The only difference is Rob has one lap older tires than Medi. That's about the only difference between these two cars here right now, and, and the guy behind the wheel. So let's see it go down let's see a battle here and i'm sure that we are going to see one at some point i know in the second that i leave this battle is probably when it goes down so we're just going to try and stick with this here keeping my eye on that mid pack though they're very close together here as well so we're trying to keep our eyes on that third fourth and fifth place especially here as well in the background but we're also trying to keep our eye on this battle for the lead here. So Mr. Elf in third place, Cayman's closing back in. Quartz is right there in the discussion now too. He's just, I think, on the tail edge of that slip at the moment. He is. Uh, we're just try again, trying to keep our eye on these two battles at the same time here right now. Thankfully, they're close enough together to get a little bit of camera action too to see which ones are actually trying to battle for position over which ones aren't. We are definitely going to be seeing some uh, some battling for podium positions here before this race is over. I, I don't suspect uh, anything different here because right now Robbie's doing a good job of pacing Medi, um, keeping him just far enough behind not to make the move. But uh, for how long is the question? And is Medi just you know chilling back there right now, maybe waiting for the perfect time to make his move? Uh, we're not sure what's going through his mind for a world champion here right now, but Robbie Heck has uh, been scrapping very hard all season long here with Medi for that championship and uh, not surprised to see that these are the two fighting for the race win here again this weekend here in Division 1. Came in, Mr. Elf here, third, fourth, fifth, sixth place. This, this uh, battle's kind of heating up here, They're, but not, you know, they, they can see uh, those leaders up ahead, just three seconds up the road right now. So, I mean, if there is any incentive just to do a little bit of pushing up the racetrack right now, I don't know what else there is there. Uh, but Mr. Elf in fourth place here, he has lost that spot back to Cayman. 
Quartz still in fifth place, but he is closing in on those guys. And Jakey's starting to lose a little bit of touch with the pace of that group there, uh, sitting in sixth place here. So, lots starting to go down here as we near the end of this race. And I suspected that's what we'd see once the, the pit stop sequences had all sorted themselves out. So, two different lines through that left-hander coming into NASCAR 1 and 2 here. And it didn't really seem to make a whole lot of difference in the gap between the two drivers. So... Just, I mean, at any time one of these two could attack each other, we're going to miss a great battle. So we're just trying to keep an eye on these two groups of cars here right now. Great camera angle from our camera crew there, allowing us to see all five of these guys coming through the same corner there. So we can keep the keep an eye on what's happening here look at the run mr elf has got there and instead of trying to take the move he decides to give it the push here and that's probably a good smart call and there we go it's battle on medi and robbie heck and medi is going to get the position made here uh heading into the tri oval so i knew the second we left this battle we were gonna, we were gonna miss it i knew it <laughs> Switch stream engaged here. Use that slingshot to get around. Pulled that uh, pull that, time that uh, pull out perfectly and just in time headed into turn one. There for Medi to take the race lead away from Rob Heck. So uh, Medi now back in the lead of this race and Rob Heck now sees himself trying to attack Medi here, but there's still plenty of time left. Seven to go, including the lap we're on. Got came in here in third place. Mr. Elf still in fourth. Quartz is right there in fifth place now. And it's just a matter of when does he start to attack here. We've got Jakey about six seconds in behind. We've got Racing Green and Fat Loud having a good spicy little fight back here right now. It's a good little fight between these two here. They're kind of battling, but kind of not battling, you know. But it's a good little battle back there between the two of them right now. They're trying to, to work together, but they're also having their own little race. Six seconds behind the pack there right now. It's a lot of fun to be kind of keeping an eye on. But right now it's Medi, and he's purple. 44.15 is fastest lap on track currently. It's actually held by Quartz at the moment in fifth place. And that is an important point. That is an ever so important point here as the season is starting to come to an end. So Robbie half a second in behind. We got Cayman 2.5 seconds in behind. He's kind of starting to open up a little bit of a gap on Mr. Elf. Now, not the worst thing in the world for him right now, but at the same time, they were closing in on first and second place. So uh, it's a love-hate relationship right now for these drivers. Do we want to work together or do we want to battle is kind of what this is coming down to. I mean, they're right there. The front group is, they're not out of this yet. Medi's going to take fastest lap away that time around there as well. A 44.113, and boy, oh boy, it is a fight for every point here in this race today. So now on lap 20 of 25, six to go, including the lap we're on here, and first and second separated by a car length, and a third through fifth place separated by only two car lengths, essentially. So uh, we got a couple of great battles on the racetrack here right now, and don't forget about this little fight here in seventh and eighth place either. This has been a cracking little battle here as well. So three little groups fighting it out here before the end of this race. Are we going to see the photo finish that we saw in Division 2 today? Division 2 has brought us an incredible race. Uh, a, first time, a first time ever seen as well in my career in Division 2 with identical pole position qualifying times. That was interesting. And a photo finish at the checkered flag. Uh, it doesn't get a whole lot better than that. And like one of the viewers said, the only thing better would have been those guys across at the same time. Wouldn't that have been something else? And it was close. It was about a quarter pound. I think I think Lucas got handed by a boat in the front clip of that race car. So it was not a big gap. It was it was within that tenth. It was very very close between the two. Alright, Robbie's there. I mean, he is in the right spot at the right time. It is all about timing. And I mean, you're trying to pass the current running manufacturer's world champion right now. So I'm sure that you need to, uh, you need to really decide when and execute perfectly to get this to happen as well. Now, I mean, the guy's not unbeatable, obviously. Medi is beatable. We've seen other drivers win races over Medi here this season. But he is just a very, very strong competitor. And he's very hard to beat. So 
Uh, you know, he's got to give credit where credit is due. You know, he's a very consistent, solid racer who makes very little mistakes. These guys right here, Cayman, Alf, Quartz, doing a fantastic job, really trying to maintain that pace. Quartz has now moved his way around Alf, got himself into fourth place, now looking to pick up that final podium spot. He is working on Cayman here right now, and unfortunately we missed that pass there, Mr. Alf, but we are going to stick with this here for a moment as... Uh, to see if course can get a run here coming out into the NASCAR corners here and make something happen here. I, don't, I think he's just playing nice right now. I don't think Quartz is looking for the big move right now. I think that he may be thinking about trying to help close gap up a little bit. They're running out of time. I mean, we got five to go here. Uh, Medi is starting to open up the gap here on Rob a little bit. Rob is still hanging into the slipstream here, but uh, Medi is not making this final charge very easy for him here right now. And there we go, side by side. Oh, and there is contact right there. Quartz is going to be the loser right there. And that's going to put him back down into P5. He's going to jam on it there. He's going to get that car back on track. But boy, oh boy, that was unfortunate right there for Quartz as they come into the bus stop there. Let's see what happened here. And oh, just a little bit of contact there uh, from Cayman coming off of the second apex is what that looks like there. Coming off the curb, he kind of shot his car a little bit across the racing line there. And a little bit of contact on the side of Quartz's car which pushed him off there. He did a great job of gathering that up. That was really unfortunate. There's two guys just going in side by side, having a good clean battle into the chicane there. And just uh, a little mistake made there. Uh, and contact there so we'll obviously we're not gonna we're not gonna sit there and, and dwell on, on what we saw there that is a very very tough uh, that's a tough call to make right there actually and uh, I don't I don't want to be a steward in that position let me tell you what Mr. Elf here in third place we got came in here in fourth we got Quartz in fifth place uh, we got Jakey here in 6th, we got Racing Green in 7th, we got Fat and Loud in 8th place here, and Medi has absolutely just went into a whole different level of pace here all of a sudden. He's now got the cap up to 1.1 over Robbie Heck. Robbie Heck is fighting hard here, but Medi is just on a slightly better consistent pace right now, and with, well, basically, uh, three and a half laps to go, uh, including the lap we're on here. Time is certainly running out. We got Cayman trying to pull back up on Mr. Alf here now to grab uh, third place there. So Cayman and Quartz battling it out for third place there and ended up both of them being the big losers essentially because uh, uh, Mr. Alf now finds himself up in third place because of that little bit of uh, exchange between those two cars as well. We're obviously with a half second track limit penalty there and it's just getting from worse to worse for Rob there chasing down many as the race is drawing near to an end here. We got Quartz. In fifth place, he's 5.5 seconds. The race is not over until it's over. You just never know what'll happen in a race. You know, these guys typically don't make that fuel calculation mistake or anything like that, but you just never know. You just never know. All right, so 3.3 seconds now is that gap. That half second penalty was devastating on the gap difference for uh, between Medi and Rob here. And that is, uh, that is unfortunate there. I, we're really shaping up to see a good battle near the end of the race there, I think. Uh, Mr. Alf here in third place, he's 3.2 seconds in behind Rob, and he still has came and chasing him down here in fourth place. I mean, that gap is not comfortable. That is slipstream range right there. He is less than three quarters of a second in behind. And that means that there is a sense of pressure right there from that fourth place driver in behind. Quartz is doing his best here. He's 5.7 behind. Unfortunately, you hate to see it. We got Jakey here in sixth. We got Green in seventh. And we got Fat and Loud in eighth place. But boy, it is Meddy here. And uh, he's looked good all day. He's looked solid all day there. But he, uh, Rob gave him a good run here. And unfortunately for Rob, there a little bit of penalty trouble late in the race. And that is just killing momentum. Uh, he's a fast, he's a very, very fast, dedicated driver, Rob Heck is, so he, he hasn't given up, but he, he's also a realist and realizes that that, that penalty, um, that penalty may have hurt him here in, in a late charge on Medi. so, uh, right now is damage control for Rob Heck, try to close back up on the race leader if possible, but right now do not let the third place guy close the gap up in three seconds it is right now, came in his three quarters of a second behind, and is looking to try and grab that final podium spot here. 
is things are getting a little bit interesting here. In this middle part of the room here, yeah. There is the uh, ever so invisible wall here at Daytona too that has caught drivers out from time to time here coming around turn one. There's a, a spot around the corner if you tuck in a little too tight to the inside pit lane wall. There's an extension of the wall that is just not seen by the drivers, but is there. And I have seen it collect up drivers uh, several times in lobby races and league races. Uh, just get a little too close to that wall and in one certain spot. And there is just an extension of wall that just is there to kill drivers that we can't see. So thankfully we haven't seen that today, but uh, it, it is there. And the drivers are more than aware that, that that wall, the invisible wall, is there as well. So it is kind of risk versus reward, taking tight the into turn one there. But sometimes you got to do what you got to do, man. You just got to got to take the risk. Got to take the risk. Second, so many is in charge here. He's not. Uh, he, he's not letting up. He's, if anything, he's he's putting it harder into the loud pedal at this point. Mr. Alpha third place got the gap up to a second now over Cayman, and Cayman is doing everything he can to try and get that battle re-engaged here. Quartz 5.3 seconds. He is closing in, but unfortunately, just not quite quick enough there to try and re-engage that fight with uh, with Cayman there. And, and again, just an unfortunate incident in the Le Mans chicane there between the two of them. Uh, nothing egregious there, man. Two guys just holding their line, and and well, the curving, gain the curving. about there right at that apex part there if you are too tight in on turn number one there at that point there yeah there's just a pretend extension of wall that is just not coded in to be seen by drivers but kills race cars <laughs> and you can see that all these drivers are, are more than clear of that spot on the racetrack but yeah it is a dangerous spot there when you're when you're battling side by side especially through turn one in competition is when you're at risk of catching that invisible wall so to speak because you are too wide through turn one that means one driver is forced to um, stay like, tight to the inside of that corner and, and put themselves in harm's way so to speak uh, without knowing that they're in harm's way for the drivers that don't know there's an invisible wall at daytona turn one there's an invisible wall at daytona turn one that will murder you if you catch it so um if you've been fortunate enough not to get caught out by the invisible wall at daytona here in gran turismo 7 you're very very lucky uh, many of us have been caught out more than once by that wall. Just in competition, just, uh, you know, wrong spot, wrong time, wrong situation. It happens. It happens. That is devastating. It, it wrecks race cars. It, it does huge damage to race cars, so you, you don't want to hit it. You really don't. <laughs> and it's just after pit lane entry, so you got to go all the way around with that damage, too. So it's just a bad spot. It's a weird thing. It's in the game. Nothing we can do about it. Just have to be aware it's there. All right, so it is going to be Betty with the race win here, and uh, that's going to definitely help him lock up and get points, uh, padded points here for our finale here. Robbie Heck in second place, who's second place in the championship standings. Mr. Elf is going to hold on to third place from Cayman. Cayman made a charge at the end, though. Quartz here in fifth place. We got Jakey coming across here in sixth. I think Quartz had a shot at third place there, but it wasn't for the Lamont Chicane incident, but it is what it is. That's the racing. We got Racing Green here coming across the seventh, and we got Fat and Loud bringing it home here in eighth place. So we had nine start, eight finish. One did not make qualifying, unfortunately, due to mechanical error. And well, that's the way it goes. That's the way it goes. But it is our 2024 World Manufacturer Cup champion with our race win here today. Started in second and going to move it up into first place. Good job there by him. So let's just get those racing results saved up just before they shut the lobby make sure we got a replay in case it's needed fantastic stuff and we'll go chill in the podium interview room here for a minute and we'll wait to see if any of our drivers show up now sometimes many comes into chat sometimes he doesn't remember in france it's like one in the morning right now so uh he may or may not come and chat with us sometimes he does sometimes he doesn't but uh, obviously we understand due to how late it is in France right now, obviously with an eight hour time difference from us to them, 
uh, well, from me to him, anyways. Uh, I'm on the west coast, west coast of North America. He's in France, so it's an eight-hour difference between myself and him. So he may or may not pop in here, but we should probably see Rob and uh, Mr. Elf uh, possibly here. But there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Three divisions of racing. Round five of six from our GT3 championship here. This is season two from Pure Racing League. Last season, we ran the McLaren 650S. This season, we're running that beautiful 2017 Lexus RCF. Absolutely great racing piece of racing machinery. It's been a lot of fun this season with this car. And, uh... And uh, the drivers have shown a pretty good understanding on how to drive this car. We have seen some amazing finishes throughout this series all season long as well. I mean, photo finishes, uh, drag races to the start finish line, uh, pushes to get drivers across at first place at the start finish line, five, six drivers coming across start finish line in the same racing space at the same time. There has been some crazy finishes this season and from Pure Racing League. And it just goes to show at the level of competition on the racetrack when we get crazy amounts of finishes like that every single week of racing here so ggs to the drivers i mean um it's amazing that uh, the the consistency and, and the dedication that these drivers continue to put in uh round after round after round and and like pay said earlier in the division two you know with the with the focus really starting to turn on the upcoming nations cup and manufacturers competition coming up here official season is coming uh this is a lot of good seat time for these guys they're racing against each other in those competitions they're racing against each other here with the community as well it's really great seat time and really great practice for these guys to prepare for of course those upcoming events as well so all right we do have rob up in the house here so let's We'll have a chat with Mr. Rob here, our second place finisher today again, and uh, a little bit of a different strategy than uh, the Medi that you finished just behind here today. And at the end of the day, the strategy really wasn't too different. It worked out to where you had uh, one lap fresher soft tires and you really at the end of it. Uh, really good attempt at running down there. You had the race lead for a while. He did find his way around you and then you were starting to put the pressure on kind of waiting for that moment to set him up to try and attack again and penalty trouble near the end of the race, which eventually kind of ruined your run a little bit there, but a great race. Uh, second place finish here for you. Talk us about the day today. Well, honestly, I wish I had to stayed on the mediums. Um, cause I think I could have, I, I could have started on mediums. I think that would have been better because I would have been able to maybe save the fuel um, more than them because they were pushing pretty hard on fuel, I noticed. And I was able to save and pretty much keep pace. So I could have saved a lot more. Probably would have given me a lot bigger of a gap. I probably wouldn't even have had to refuel if I had started on mediums um, just with the pace I had. But yeah, Medi, Medi was just too quick. I mean... With the penalty, I mean, I would have I lost like two seconds because of the penalty. I mean, I'm pretty happy finishing only three seconds back from him when he's doing 44 ones without draft. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it, it could have been better. I think I could have had him with a little bit better strategy. Um, I wish I had a taken fuel. Um, yeah, I, I needed to take more fuel on the pit stop. That way I could have pushed. But, yeah, it is what it is. I'm happy with the result. I mean, P2's good result, pole position uh, in quali, so can't really complain. No, and, I mean, uh, Pei may touch base on this in, in Division 2 earlier today, too. You know, right now this is a, a really great opportunity for the drivers to really kind of start to get prepared for the upcoming Nations Cup and Manufacturer season coming out where, of course, everybody's focus is going to be there here uh, coming up in just a few weeks' time. So is that kind of the same thing for you? You know, you're on track with a lot of the competition that you're up against in the in the live stage events. Is, is that exactly what you're kind of treating this as here leading into that now? It's really just seat time and, and free practice to continue to push yourself yeah. against this higher competition? Yeah, it's really just about staying sharp in this off season, um, just so I can be at my best during the official season, you know, the people missing the races. I mean, I get it. It's a holiday. 
and uh, people keep scheduling, you know, Super Bowls and the holiday on, on my race days. But, you know. I mean, what, what can we do about uh, that, right? I mean, uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, if we didn't get pushed back two weeks at the beginning of the season because of uh, server issues, so we wouldn't even have run into this problem. So it is what it is. It's not a big deal. Um and I, I think that, yeah. uh, I mean, finale night, is it always seems to draw a sense of the drivers really want to come in and put on a great show for the last race of the season. Oh, so yeah. I do suspect that we're going to see some very stuffed grids uh, in two weeks' time to finish this thing off here for season two as well. But, um, you know, all in all, uh, uh, not to take away from the Division One race here today, a little bit of a small field, again, due to the holiday. It's Easter. We understand that. But, uh, yeah. you know, again, another solid three divisions of racing coming out of the Pure Racing League camp here this week uh all three divisions with great strategy great race pace and great battling out there uh you know pretty happy with how the seasons are going in season two yeah i'm I'm pretty happy with it so far i mean the competition level has definitely been a a step up from the previous season so um but division one i mean medi's always the kind of the target so as far as I'm concerned, if no one else shows up and it's just me and Medi racing, then it's still good practice for me. Absolutely. And uh, we do have Medi actually up in the interview box here. So we're just going to cut this short just for a minute so we can jump over to him because it's very late where he's at. So we'll uh, give him a chance to, to say hi to the fans and, and give his words. And then we'll get back to uh, Mr. Elf and Rob here. Your voice, your voice is uh, cutting out a little bit too. So okay, ten four. I want to reopen the call. Uh, it might fix it. Ten. If we if we all back out of the interview yep, and yep. rejoin it, it should fix it. Gotta love a chat. You gotta love technology, right? I mean it uh there we go, Medi's still here. You can hear me, I think. Fantastic. Hopefully my voice is not cracking up now for these guys. Uh, for now it's all good for now it's all good I'll stay nice and close <laughs> all right let's talk to our race winner here and reigning 2000 uh, reigning world manufacturer champion here currently right now we're five out of six rounds into the season you had a 10 point lead coming into today another great race win uh, looking like securing your championship here in a repeat championship from pre racing league in season two uh, how are you feeling today great race and talk us through it well, um, I was pretty confident on this track. Um, the car was uh, handling pretty well. Uh, about the strategy, I didn't really know what to do. I barely did a few laps in the lobby um, for, like before joining the official one. And uh, yeah, I had barely the, the idea of what I, I was going to do. So I decided to start on the mediums uh, and stay as long as possible. And then I noticed that uh, Robbie uh, did uh, like two laps on the hot tires, so I figured that I should do the same. Uh, and uh, actually, uh, it worked out pretty well because uh, we overcut uh, Quartz and myself, and actually it was the best decision because uh, <laughs> even even with the extra lap, uh, like the tire, uh, the real right tire was still dead at the end. <laughs> so. Actually, it benefited uh, me a lot uh, on Robbie because I noticed that he couldn't keep me uh, up uh, for s for long. Also, I had much more fuel than him, I think. So, yeah, <laughs> basically, it's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Absolutely, and I know that you were potentially speculating on not competing this season, but you know, you've been on track. You've been competing again. This is what seems to be like on the top of your game here so far, pure racing league season. And I'm sure probably in other areas of the sim racing community. Uh, are you going to be running this season? Uh, are you talking about the manufacturers? Teams? Yes, that's correct. Yes. Uh, you, well, not this year, unfortunately, because. Um... Like even if I qualify, there's no way that I could be attending the events. So, I mean, like I, I would like to participate, but if I can, I, I know I cannot in, uh, attend to the events. Like there's no point for me to race, and also maybe screwing up uh, other people's uh, chances to qualify themselves. So, unfortunately, no, not this year. But next year, yeah, I plan on uh, coming back. 
Absolutely. And I mean, sometimes real life, uh, real life is real life, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, we're in a virtual world here, sim racing, and, uh, and you know, sim racing doesn't pay the bills, unfortunately. So we all do have to still go out and do real life things. But, you know, uh, it's unfortunate we're not going to see you there this year, but I definitely look forward to uh, seeing you return into the next season. But nonetheless, you know, we still get to watch you perform at a very high level here at Pure Racing League. And it's an honor to be able to watch uh, all the GTWS competitors out here competing against each other in a in a more fun relaxed environment so um is that what it feels like to you guys when you're racing say in this league compared to being on the live stage is it a lot more laid back and relaxed environment compared to that kind of pressure filled situation you're in when you're standing underneath all the lights and cameras i would say it's much more relaxed definitely because you don't have uh, the pressure of um all the spectators uh, like watching you and also uh, cheering you because uh, you know when you're racing uh, in the events, even with the headset, which is, which the sound is pretty loud in my opinion, you can still uh, hear the uh, the background quite a lot. So, <laughs> I mean, it's ex exciting, but at the same time, like it's uh, um, you know. It's hard to handle sometimes, <laughs> but yeah, I would say it's so much more relaxed to be at home and do some racing leagues, but nonetheless, it's too competitive, so I don't have to uh, like to lash out. Like I always give myself at 100%. And it definitely shows on the racetrack. You're always giving it out there. You, you, it doesn't look like you're leaving anything uh, out on the racetrack. And, and I still look like you're on, on the top of your game here. So congratulations on a great race win. And uh, unless something drastic happens for you in two weeks' time here, looking like a repeat championship as well here from Pure Racing League. And I guess anything you'd like to add and any thank yous you'd like to throw to the viewers at home? Well... As always, thank you again for commenting, streaming. Uh, also, again, thanks to the organizers uh, for making this uh, racing league. Unfortunately, not many people are attending to it, which is, yeah, it's unfortunate to be fair. But it is what it is. We're still racing, uh, having fun still. And I want to say uh, thanks for, for Sam for, you know, uh, team working with me, even if we did not... Uh, uh, like we did not teamwork much in the race, but we were in the party chat together, so I still thank him for that. And also like the French community as always uh, for being there to support me even for every race, uh, because I was also live streaming on uh, from from my POV, so yeah, <laughs> they were they were there and cheering, cheering me, so yeah. <laughs> So yeah, that's it. Awesome. We love to see that. We definitely love to see the uh, the communities communities getting the love back from all the content creators. And uh, congratulations on a really really well raced race today. Thank you. Thank you, mate. Thank you. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen. So our reigning two thousand our reigning manufacturers champion right now. Unfortunately, not going to be competing this year. Obviously, sometimes that happens. Real life coming into play. But uh, we definitely look forward to seeing what he's going to bring for us. Not only next week in the Master Series, but two weeks time in our GT three finale. But let's not forget our third place finisher here mr alf on screen this guy had an incredible race today too as well it was a little bit of a harder fought race for him here today he had to really fight the charge of cayman off uh on a handful of occasions here throughout our race today and he managed to hold off that charge and come out in third place he had a good battle of courts there later in the race too as well and comes out on the final step of the podium here today so congratulations on a hard fought third place finish here today and Talk us through how your race went for yourself today. Thanks, <laughs> thanks. I, I didn't expect to, to be here when I started the season. I'm, I'm happy to have managed to get at least one podium, even if it's under these circumstances. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the race I, I did. Uh, was, in general, I was, I was ready to work with Cayman. I already kind of had a game plan based off of uh, what we had done in Tokyo where him and I we were in we were in the party we were in the party together in a group chat and we kind of made some mistakes we let the the front pack go away that time uh we were much more prepared this time but obviously the likes of Mehdi and Robbie they had a different idea for what was, what the race was going to be so kind of tough to keep up with them in that first part of the race but 
the fuel saving really helped us out at the end. Uh, in terms of those last few laps, I was I was really trying to work with Cayman. I didn't want Quartz to be in the in the draft with me. I I felt like he did have slightly bit more pace as well as he did have also a bit more fuel. Uh, unfortunately, we made a couple of mistakes. We let him in, and at that point, I was just trying to save a little bit of tires, saving a little bit of fuel as well. And you know, you can definitely do that in the draft. And I was ready to make my move at the fi in the final few laps as soon as I saw Quartz uh, start to be aggressive. But obviously, they, they took each other out, so that kind of helps. Absolutely. And that was an unfortunate moment there as they entered the LeBlanc chicane there. They were really just really nice and tidy side by side. And, uh, you know, with the, uh, one of the cars just kind of kicked off the curb funny and it created a little bit of contact and uh, it created a little bit of space for you, to say, I guess, so to speak there. And uh, sometimes, you know, it's about timing and racing and just being in the right place at the right time. And that was definitely one of those moments for you. But, you know, all in all, I mean, all throughout the race, you did a really great job with came in managing that gap to Rob and Medi up front. Uh, for the most part, you guys kept that within about three or four seconds for the large portion of the race and, uh, and really only kind of started to lose that gap near the end there so uh all in all really happy with how things went out went for you guys here today yeah i think i think in general we can be pretty happy i mean obviously was, we were going to score more points this round than we were going to score in a normal round with a slightly weaker field but still coming out with a third and fourth is really really good we actually had a, I think we had a slight chance of fighting for the win, but I think Medi was just was just teasing us a bit. He was controlling the pace, just waiting for his time to make a move and really push past Robbie. And then when Robbie he got he broke uh, Robbie from the draft, and I I tried to I tried to pass Robbie. I saw he made a couple of mistakes at the end of the race. He was really struggling with the tire wear, but he he held on pretty well. But uh, yeah, it was it was pretty encouraging after seeing how they they've been seven, eight, tenths ahead pretty much every race. You know, seeing this race, the gap has been significantly closer in the last few laps. I actually we were, I was matching Robbie's pace. Uh, obviously, under different circumstances, I do agree that he probably underfield. But yeah, in general, just happy with how the race has gone and the, the progress I've made through the season. And I, I qualified to this division by 34,000s. I don't know if people remember that. So just to be up here on the podium is, uh, is, is, is a dream. Uh, to be honest. Absolutely. And I mean, you know, you, you guys are up against, you know, some of the best, best of the business right now. Some of the guys are absolutely on the top of their game. And I mean, at the end of the day, um, myself being a team owner, you know, we have drivers that are uh, of all sorts of different pace levels. And, and you know, a, a driver gets a little discouraged at time when you get placed in a division in a league that you feel like you're maybe not quite up to pace for. But by the end of the season, the attitude of those drivers typically changes. And, and you just said it perfectly yourself, you know, uh, where you started out at the beginning of the season and, and finding yourself on a podium near the end of the season that's uh, a great learning experience and and uh, and in my opinion some great success as well yeah absolutely it's a shame we didn't run at uh we didn't run last week at san Cra because I, I felt like we I, I actually had quite good pace so it would have been interesting to see i, I also felt like I, I practiced a lot more than I did for Daytona. Not that I didn't practice for Daytona per se, but just in general, I felt like the the race last week demanded different things that I thought I think I'm better at. So it's a shame that I didn't get to run that race. But all in all, yeah, just very happy with the progression uh, that we that I've made. I say I said we because. I guess I'm counting came in and this we've we've we kind of come through together and we're doing this together. But yeah, I'm, I say we've we've both improved a lot across the season. I'm I'm very happy and very proud of him as well for that. And uh, yeah, just really good points we picked up in this in this round. Hopefully, absolutely. Uh, with the people that were around us in the table, like Jos and uh, Cyrus, they were not here, so. It gives us a chance to finish above them potentially. So this is 
Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I mean, Cayman, Cayman's in the chat here uh, is saying great job and outstanding performance uh, to yourself as well. So, I mean, you can tell that, uh, that that the two drivers have have created that little bit of a bond here in the series as well. And, and I mean, that's what it's all about. You know, sim racing is about creating friendships and, and, of course, obviously some spirited competition on the racetrack. But, you know, all in all, enjoying your experience here with Pure Racing League this season. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm I'm privileged because I've had the chance to fight a lot of World Tour drivers and on team competitions mostly, but I, I wanted to expand my horizons this season, and I knew straight away after what what had happened last season, this was a, a perfect place to do it, uh, going to race against the North American World Tours, which is also a completely unexplored territory for me. I, I'd raced against the likes of Josete and, and, and Medi a few times, but I'd never raced against non-European world tours. So it was, it's it's nice to have a comparison and obviously check out that regardless of the reason the region, regardless of wherever they're they're coming from, they're absolutely unbelievably quick. And yeah, it's just a great experience, a great learning experience and something that I hope to use going forward for the official season absolutely and we all know that that is definitely looming very closely here obviously this season here scheduled to make sure that it ends before our official Gran Turismo online qualifiers start up so uh you know a great seat time obviously for that great practice and well a little bit of confidence maybe too as well leading into that having some great performances here near, near the end of the season not only from yourself but also your friend came in there as well and I guess with that being said anything you'd like to add to your race day today and any shout outs to the viewers watching at home well obviously Shout outs to, I don't know if he's watching or I hope he is. Shout outs to Robbie and all the people behind this for making it happen because uh, sometimes people who organize championships, they, they go under the radar. They don't get much of the credit for what actually happens on the track, but absolutely. Uh, thank you so much for organizing this. And obviously shout out to my, my guy, Kevin, uh, you know, he did an unbelievable job today. I I had a little. I wasn't that sure. He told me to. He told me the second stint. He he told me I I want to go in front because I, I feel like I have pace and I've I've been wasting my tires behind you. Uh, I was a bit doubtful because he he had been shredding the tires, but you know he 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 played his part today, and it's a shame that how it ended for him, but. He he definitely has a he definitely played a big part in us getting this result. So yeah, massive thanks to him, of course. Awesome. Well, we love to hear that. We love to see that uh, you know camaraderie within the divisions, even though we're racing against each other. We definitely love to see the camaraderie. And you know, it it's nice to talk to some new faces as well uh, throughout the season on the podium interview. So congratulations on a very well earned third place finish for you tonight. You guys have been fighting hard all season long. You show up almost every single week and you give it everything you got. And this week most certain rewarded with a third with a third place finish this season so uh congratulations on a very well-earned race today and we'll let you get back to that clubhouse and go celebrate with all those awesome drivers in behind the scenes <laughs> thanks man cheers uh, unironically unironically i told i told we were joking like at the start of the season that if we that if either of us got a podium we were gonna have we were gonna have, go have a rave somewhere it's a bit a bit late for that i mean it's 1 a.m here in spain but I'm sure we'll figure something out, but yeah, thanks, thanks for the, thanks for the compliment. One well, a.m. isn't that the perfect time to go find a good rave in Spain? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I guess I don't got, I don't got experience for that though. I got somebody you. Got, somebody gotta tell me. So we gotta tell me some some tips for that. We definitely, anyway. we definitely know that the nightlife over there in the European side of things is absolutely top level we definitely know that down here in north america we're envious of you guys uh nightlife and and everything that you guys have going on over there in that part of the world that's for sure is lots of culture over there in europe and and uh, spain france and all those areas ladies and gentlemen if you haven't had an opportunity to travel to those parts of the world the nightlife culture is phenomenal so just gotta ask the right people and get directed in there and definitely go celebrate a big win but congratulations and maybe we'll be talking to you finale night you just never know Thank you, man. Hopefully I see you in the final round. Cheers. We meet up again in the interview. Absolutely.
All right, great job to came into again. Uh, teamwork makes the dream work, and all the drivers today realized that slipstream and bump drafting was really crucial here at Daytona today. And um, obviously, you could see the experience level of the divisions really kicked in as we went through through from the lowest division to the highest division today. We started with Division Three. Working together wasn't really on their minds. Those guys, they were just battling it out, man. They were all all the gloves were off and they were just duking it out for positions all race long. It, it was, it was, it was a spicy race. It was a fantastic race of division three. And we see our current uh, points leader, Toombox come in with a big race win and a great strategy drive there in division three. And then we head to division two and we see a completely different race. We see a much more calculated race. We see a lot of slipstream bump drafting driving. We see it in qualifying as well. And we see a photo finish between Peme and Lucas three, six, nine for first and second place. And that, that race literally separated by front splitter. It was absolutely incredible. And then we head to this Division One race, and of course, Medi and Robbie doing Medi and Robbie things, uh, controlling the pace of the race and really showing what can be done around these racetracks. But then you've got the new faces coming in today. Mr. Alf came in and really putting on a great performance here today, and a new podium finisher here in round five with Mr. Alf online to, uh, on the podium too as well. Very well spoken interview as well. Uh, appreciate all of our drivers for popping in for the interviews today throughout all three of our divisions. We appreciate all the drivers that took time out of their easter weekend to come and race and put on a show for the viewers at home who are also enjoying their easter weekend happy easter to everybody at home that's viewing as well we appreciate y'all thank you to the officials the stewards and everybody that makes things tick over here at pure racing league obviously we don't have a series without the designers the developers and the guys running things behind the scenes the stewards have tough decisions at the competition level this high so you know thank you to all the volunteers behind the scenes and most importantly thank you to you guys and gals at home today the viewers on such an important easter weekend uh taking the time to come out and hang out with us uh I've been watching the, the channels and, and you guys have really been showing up today. There's been lots of viewers coming in and out, checking to see what's happening here today. So we appreciate you. If you have liked and shared the stream, we appreciate you. It's absolute legendary. DOGs know, know the deal. For those of us that may be new, if you wouldn't mind liking and sharing this out for us, it's a free thing you can do to help the pages grow. It just reaches more people so more people can see what we're doing over here at Pure Racing League and GT45 Gaming, bringing high energy live sim racing content to your big screens at home work or wherever it is you're viewing from a technology really the sky's the limit nowadays so uh, you can pretty much watch anything from anywhere as long as you have an internet connection but uh thank you so much for being here with me on the easter weekend as well i'm glad that we could get out a little bit of a better broadcast for everybody i am under the weather here this weekend for sure having my own struggles but a uh, great set of races here today from pure racing league it's always a pleasure to be here in the booth broadcasting such great competition all day long here so what does that mean that means we have round five of master series coming next sunday and then we're down to our finales ladies and gentlemen so round five of masters will start off next weekend and we are going to be at saint croix b reverse and we're going to be in the Honda NSX GT500 2008. So that is going to be an interesting race. And I believe that is a Group 2 car. And uh, the San Croix B Reverse is a very tricky racetrack. So, uh, yeah, we are definitely in for a treat. with that one and we are going to see a racing race car here as well uh for that race i believe that is going to be our group 2 honda nsx if i'm not mistaken uh the car that we're going to see in the master series this coming sunday here as well so should be a fairly fast paced race and again st croix b reverse is quite a difficult racetrack it's very technical for those of us that know it forward it's got great flow it's got great set of corners it's got great racing ability but when you tackle the track backwards it is a different beast and uh it is a little more technical and you got to be a little more savvy around your corners at st croix b reverse so it is going to be an interesting race for our masters next weekend great racing all the way around by east division today y'all well done appreciate you nolander <laughs> all discos must be full by now says came and get your butts in there man go do some go do some dancing boys go celebrate p4 is cool you had a great race dude it was very hard earned all right so anyways as i was saying uh 
hopefully everybody has a great remainder of their Easter weekend. It's just drawing to a close very quickly. Some of us have probably got that four-day weekend for Easter. Some of us do not. Um, but we hope, nonetheless, it's been a great weekend. We hope you've had good eats. We hope you've had good family time. We hope you've had some laughs. And we hope you enjoyed Pure Racing League here today. Uh, we'd just like to thank again everybody for showing in. Thank you for all the reactions, the comments, for hanging out with us. Thank you to all the racers for coming out on a holiday weekend. And again, thank you to Pure Racing League. Uh, out of all the leagues that I work with, I work with several leagues across several different types of races, sprints, endurance races, all kinds of different leagues throughout this GT7 platform and a little bit on ACC console as well from time to time. This is by far one of the most competitive leagues I've been able to commentate on and i really can't wait to see what season three is going to have in store whenever it is that pure racing league finally opts to drop season three i think we're in for a absolutely epic season three here coming from these guys this year as well so you know if you've been sitting on the fence you're not sure if you fit in it is for all skill levels here at pure racing league obviously the competition you're seeing on track right now is some pretty stiff competition but the more drivers that we continue to bring in the more that we get to separate the pace of those drivers to where they belong and just even better the racing is going to get and i tell you what if you want to learn how to become a better faster more efficient racer pure racing league is definitely one of those leagues you want to become a part of because these guys have some incredible racers here and these incredible racers are always willing to show tips show tricks, get on track and help you out, find you a little more time, refine some corners, refine some breaking zones. It really is a group effort here in community racing. And just because you're competing against each other on the track doesn't mean that you're keeping secrets off the track. These guys get together, they practice together, they figure out strategies together, they figure out multiple different strategies together to use. And we end up with a great racing week every single week here from Pure Racing League because of that, that teamwork that happens behind the scenes within the competitors. So... If you're sitting on the fence and you're thinking about joining, come give it a shot in Season 3. Come test your mettle. Even if you're not the fastest driver in the world, that's okay because you'll get placed with drivers the same skill level with you. You'll have great racing and you're going to learn a ton. So stay tuned for the social. Stay tuned through the rest of the season. we got three broadcasts left for everybody. Next weekend will be 6 p.m. Eastern Time here at GT45 Gaming and we'll bring the Master Series live to everybody. That's typically about an hour to an hour and a half long broadcast and then we'll have finale weekend for GT3 on the weekend afterwards, April 14th. So appreciate y'all. Thanks for being here. Remember, y'all matter. If you're struggling in life and you just need somebody to talk to, reach out. The sim racing community is here. Somebody is here just to let you get it off your chest so you can start to move forward with whatever it is you're going with. Okay, we're here for you. Uh, the community has been here for me. I'm here for the community and that goes all the way through this community. This is a top level community. It really is. Um, it never ceases to amaze me what this community does for each other. So don't be scared to reach out, okay? If you're struggling, please reach out. Let us help. You know, we, we, we might not be able to fix what's going on, but we can give advice so we can sit there and listen and let you get that frustration out of your system so you can focus on defeating the problem at hand. Because life is hard, man. Life kicks us when we're down. It has a funny way of showing us that we're doing things the right way. But it is up to us to stay positive and to stay moving forward, which leads me into my next very catchphrase saying, stay winning. Stay winning is a message of positivity, folks. You always keep your head up and you always keep pushing forward no matter what is coming at you because tomorrow's a new day and a new day brings a new adventure. Appreciate y'all. We love y'all. We'll catch you on the next one. <laughs>